Assalamualaikum wabarakatuh. Good morning and welcome, Your Excellency, Director General of Higher Education, Research and Technology, Republic of Indonesia, Professor Nizam, the Honorable Rector of Universitas Gajah Mada, Vice Rector for Research and Community Services, distinguished guests, experts from JIK, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Universitas Gajah Mada, one of the oldest universities in Indonesia. Now we are in the Senate Hall, Universitas Gajah Mada Central Building. It was inaugurated by the first President of the Republic of Indonesia, Soekarno, in 1959. Universitas Gajah Mada today had the honor of welcoming participants on international webinar about the research dissemination on the impact of study abroad in higher education in Indonesia. This morning event is intended to produce dissemination of the result of multidisciplinary international research collaborations between Universitas Gajah Mada, ITB, and JICA, the Republic of Indonesia, which were carried out in 2019 until 2022 with the title Research Dissemination on the Impact of Foreign Studies in Universities in Indonesia. This event are organized and hosted by Directorate of Research Universitas Gajah Mada, collaboration with Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Higher Education Republic of Indonesia and Japan International Cooperation Agency Republic of Indonesia. To get things started, we are pleased all of participants to stand up and we are we are singing the national anthem of Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Gajah Mada.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, next we like to invite Vice Rector for Education, Learning and Student Affairs Universitas Gejah Mada to deliver a welcoming remarks. Professor Jagal Wiseso Marseno, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi dan salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Om Swastiastu, Nama Budaya, Salam Kebajikan. Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Dear Excellencies, Professor Faisal Fatani, the Director of Research, Technology and Community Services, Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology of Republic of Indonesia, Professor Nobuko Kayashima, and Professor Naoki Umemia from Japan International Cooperation Agency, Ogata Research Institute, Professor Yudi Suharyadi, from the Institute of Technology Bandung, Professor from Forum Rector Indonesia, Deputy Minister, Representative of the Indonesian Education Fund Management Institution, LPDP, Distinguished Plenary and Invited Speakers, College Participants, Students, Faculty and Staff, Ladies and Gentlemen. Good morning, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I trust that all of you are safe and in good health. On behalf of Universitas Gajah Mada, it is my great honor and pleasure to welcome all of you to this international webinar on the impact of study abroad in higher education in Indonesia. Special warm welcome and gratitude goes to Professor Faisal Fatani, who amid the very many depends on his time is willing to support and give the keynote speech to this international webinar. Thank you, Professor Faisal Fatani. I would like also to send our gratitude to Senior Research Officer of JICA Ogata Research Institute, Professor Nobuko Kayashima and Professor Naoki Umemia for the working collaboration with UGM team member led by Dr. Wahyu Spartono in this very fundamental research project which already started in 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, as commonly recognized with globalization of societies and economies, the higher education sector has rapidly been internationalized and the mobility of international students continue to increase. The migration of scholars and professionals to major intellectual centers is increasingly common phenomenon in the world. It has been both positively valued in non-Western as well as in Western countries. In modern Indonesia, the growth of higher education started following the enactment of the first Higher Education Act in 1961. 
the law defines the mission of higher education and detail that the name is three Dharma Perguruan Tinggi, the three pillars of national higher education, that is learning, research, and community services. This current collaborative study between UGM and JICA Ogata Research Institute assess the impact of study abroad in Universitas Gajah Mada for Tri Dharma Perguruan Tinggi as well as its managerial issue. Indeed, most of professor and leading researchers both in natural science and social science at UGM are overseas graduate. They have made important contribution to the development of teaching, academic innovation and policy, research and community services, and the well-being not only to our university, but also to our society at large. In addition, to the 248 study programs in our 18 faculties, one vocational school and one graduate school. UGM has 22 research centers with wide range of global collaboration. This creates the learning setting at UGM to have Indonesian as well as international atmosphere. By this, studying abroad is important and has been one among other ways to increase the success rate of academic performance of a university in terms of education, research, and community services. Ladies and gentlemen, as much effort as possible Elements of study abroad such as the availability of funding, the degree level of study, the destination countries, policies in individual university, policies from the government continue to be contested. So let this international webinar on the impact of study abroad in higher education in Indonesia provide food for thoughts as well as serve as collaborative platform for universities and for policymakers to have better future design to the development of our scholars and to the future of our nation. I wish you all a safe, healthy, and successful conference. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Vice Rector for Education, Learning, and Student Affairs, Universitas Gajah Mada, Professor Jagal Wisesa Marcino, for the welcoming remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, next we listen to the keynote speech from the one of the researchers from Faculty of Engineering, Universitas Gajah Mada. Now he serves as a director for research, technology, and community services in Ministry of Education, Culture and Higher Education Republic of Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, now we have connected to Professor Faisal Fatoni from Zoom meeting and to Professor Faisal Fatoni, please to deliver a keynote speech. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very nice to, to be called as a researcher from Faculty of Engineering of Gajamada University. Uh, and also uh, as the uh, alumni from Japan University as well. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi, good morning. Uh, Honorable Rector of Universitas Gajah Mada, the Vice Rectors of Education, Teaching and Student Affairs, Professor Jaga Wiseso Marcelo. Uh, I can see the uh, Rector Senior, Professor Panut Mulyono, the Director of LPDP, the Director for Research, uh, and the Director of Community Services of Universitas Gajah Mada, the representative from JICA, Ogata Research Institute, and ITB, 
as the joint research teams led by Dr. Wahyu Supartono, all of invited speakers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Minister of Education, Culture, Research and Technology, and on behalf of the Director General of Higher Education, Research and Technology, I would like to express our highest appreciation to Universitas Gajah Mada, uh, JICA, and also ITB for conducting a joint research entitled The Impact of Study Abroad Experience, Experiences for Academic Professionals of Major University in ASEAN countries uh, from 2019 to 2022. The Directorate General for Higher Education, Research and Technology of the Republic of Indonesia strongly supports the research collaboration in terms of bilateral and also multilateral. We have a lot of research scheme, which is a collaborative research. Uh, later on, I will explain in my presentation. And also, we strongly support the research funding from basic research, applied research to development research with a total budget yearly is up to 85 million US dollars. In addition, the potential for research downstreaming can continue to be developed through the matching fund Kedereka scheme with available fund of up to 70 million US dollars. And congratulations for UGM as one of the uh, university who received uh, the most budget for both schemes, competitive fund and matching fund. There are five research Recording priorities. Recording in progress. There are five research priorities for research and community services in the Directorate General of Higher Education Research and Technology. The first one is green economy related to sustainability, uh, renewable energy, agriculture, and then blue economy related to maritime, fishery, and also uh, uh, related to the uh, blue economy from the maritime, and then digital transformation, health and medicine, and also tourism. Aside of a competitive funds for research and matching fund for product downstreaming, the Directorate General of Higher Education, Research and Technology also encouraged massive involvement of students to take part in MBKM program, Emancipated Learning Independence Campus, which is UGM is now the PMO, Project Management Officer Office for this program, by certified internship program in industry and independent studies, village development, research, and also international Indonesian student mobility, uh, to fund Indonesian student for mobility program at top university overseas. Undergraduate student could spend one semester at the overseas university's partner to study, to experience the host country's culture and undertake practical assignment to hone their skill. Last year, there were more than 80,000 students who participated in Campus Merdeka program, and it is expected that this year it will be more than 100,000 students uh, related to the program from the ministry and also the independent program at the campus uh, for MBKM with 40% of the students hopefully are digital talents who have a good digital literacy who will later bring progress to this nation in the field of technology. Hopefully with this international webinar and by evaluating and learning from the finding and recommendation from this joint research will improve the collaborative network in education, research, science, and technology between universities, educational institutions from Indonesia, Japan, Southeast Asian countries, and all over the world, and also could increase the uh, number of our students, undergraduate, master, and doctoral students who expand their academic, uh, their research topics with this network, and also to increase their capacity uh, to, to support the, the achievement of three pillars of higher education, uh, three Dharma Perguruan Tinggi, education, research, and community services. And most importantly, could direct the future policy of uh, the Ministry of uh, Education, Culture, Research, and Technology in promoting and providing the future scholarship in coordination with LPDP for the new candidates in master and doctoral uh, study in Indonesia and abroad. And as being mentioned by uh, my senior, Professor Jagal, Vice Rector, 
that the alumni from overseas university could bring a significant impact and broaden and strengthen the international collaboration between Indonesia and partner university abroad. And at the end of the day, this collaboration then will elevate the implementation and achievement of our three pillars in higher education. So if there is still time, I would like to give a short presentation, maybe five minutes. Let me share my screen. So in transforming the higher education, like I mentioned before that the international research collaboration is one of the key point, and this can be supported by, of course, by the alumni of the uh, lecturers or faculty members graduated from overseas university. We have uh, four direct directions or strategy to strengthen the research and community services in Indonesia. The first one is to improve the research relevance and community services. Nowadays, it is not relevant if we decide the research team or research uh, topic by just thinking what we can, what we can do, or what we like to do. So we need to have a good understanding in what is the community needs, what is the industrial need, what is the research agenda from the government, and finally we could design the research agenda in the university. And we also think that the uh, research topics coming from individual researcher or small group of researchers is less impactful compared to a consortium or association that discuss uh, about their grand design and having a good roadmap in order to solve the country's problem. The second one is improving the research human resources. I think this is strongly related with this international webinar. You could see the first one is master and doctoral degree scholarship for lecturers and then uh, the research funding for master program, PT, master student, PTM, for doctoral student, PDD, and also for the, for the master acceleration to PhD, PMDSB. And then we have also visiting professor, world class professor program. The third one is to improve the research and publication quality. By these three strategy, and finally we could uh, create a good and also meaningful uh, research and community services collaborations, not only on the paper of the MOU, but also with the real activities between two parties or three parties. And then uh, there are a lot of topics and also flagship for national priority research. We have a lot of biodiversity, diversity, culture, uh, and also technology, and there are a lot of uh, topics that we could uh, improve in the research and technology in Indonesia. And as for the priorities for the research, of course, uh, the guidance, the main guidance is for the national research priorities 2017 to 2044, 45, with nine priorities, starting from the food, energy, health, medicine, transportation, engineering product, defense and security, maritime, social, humanity, and other topics. And from these nine topics, we have five main focus uh, for this year and also the next coming years, guided by the President of Republic Indonesia. The first one is the green economy, and then the blue economy, tourism, technology, and medical devices, and also digital technology. And all of it could be achieved by having an appropriate technology and science, technology, engineering, and mathematics uh, as the support. And for international collaborative program, we have two different schemes supporting by the ministry. In short, as long as the collaboration is G2G uh, cooperation, then the ministry has the mandatory to support uh, the collaboration. The left side is the bilateral joint funding program, for example, between Indonesia and Newton Fund, UK, Indonesia with the Netherlands, with NWO, and also Indonesia with Nusantara, uh, with Perfriends, with Nusantara program. We have also multilateral joint funding uh, between Indonesia, Japan, and Southeast Asian countries with E-Asia program, and also between Indonesia, Southeast Asian countries, and European Union. And of course, all of the initiatives, most of the initiatives coming from the uh, 
the lecturer or faculty members graduated uh, overseas. But I cannot say uh, my thinking only. The finding of this joint research is very important to give a, a good recommendation for the ministry for the future uh, strategy in terms of the uh, uh, continuing master and doctoral study for our lecturer and also uh, faculty members. For international collaborative research, we have uh, four objectives to strengthen the connection and have greater collaboration in the future and tend to create appropriate inter and transdisciplinary research as been mentioned by uh, our vice rector and then to broaden the research perspective, research field to deliver higher impact research output and to significantly increase research publication in Indonesia uh, researchers in reputable scientific journals. We have more than uh, 14,000 journals in Indonesia not only under higher education but also in other uh, ministries or institutions. Seven of uh, seven thousand of the journal is under the evaluation and also the direction of uh, the ministry by Arjuna platform and they have uh, the accreditation of Sinta 1 to Sinta 6. 120 having a scope, a scopus accreditation. Uh, most of the international collaborative research supporting by the ministry have the uh, multi-year scheme, scheme uh, two to three years, and uh, the budget for Indonesian research is coming from the Ministry of uh, Education, Culture, Research, and Technology, and the budget from the uh, overseas uh, research is coming from their government. Uh, this is, for example, how the bilateral and also multilateral uh, research collaboration could, uh, we have now in Indonesia. And also, uh, this program is uh, parallelly will work together with SAME program. As you know, that we can dispatch uh, the lecturers or young researchers or the principal uh, researchers to, to have the sabbatical leave stay overseas for three months to uh, one semester or six months. So, uh, in Nusantara program with friends, a lot of, uh, of uh, Indonesian university. Uh, involved in this program, and you can see that UGM also one of the main uh, university involved in this Nusantara program. With that uh, collaboration, uh, they will they, they, they will provide one million euros, and it will reach maybe up to five million euros after discussing last week in Jakarta. I'm the one who signed the MOU for uh, the next five years between uh, minister, the ministry and also the Dutch uh, Research Council. And this is the university involved in uh, the, the collaboration with Dutch, uh, with the Netherlands, and we have Universitas Gajah Mada here. Uh, and then with this collaborative research, we could we could have a good grand design. Who, uh, which university will doing what, what working package they should do, and it is integrated in one good uh, uh, plan like this. And also for Newton Fund, again, UGM is one of the leading university in this Newton Fund with collaboration with United Kingdom. And also with uh, e Asia Joint Research, uh, UGM also involved in this program, the collaboration between Indonesia, Japan, and Southeast Asian countries, including uh, Korea and also uh, Russia and Australia as well. Uh, I will skip this one. And not only university, but also from uh, industry, private sector, they also involved in this uh, collaborative research. And it's good to have our alumni from uh, Indonesian University and also, of course, from abroad to have the connection, to have the link and match between the university and the industry. The big problem we have now that we have the, the silo there between what is going on in the university with their research and education and what, what is the industry or the working world need. So this gap we need to uh, fill with inviting a lot of participation from private sector, from industry, to increase our uh, educational uh, program as well. Uh, and then uh, this is the last slide. Just two days ago, I uh, witnessed the sign of MOU between U2U uh, uh, collaboration between Indonesia, Faculty of Engineering, Gajah Mada University, and also RWTH Aachen University. And there are a lot of activities there guest lecturers, workshops, student exchange, professor exchange, research collaboration, 
and of course also laboratory development which is a lot of money involving there with with until now there is no support from the university that's very interesting that g2g uh, collaboration is strongly supported by the ministry but there are a lot of u to u collaboration between university uh, like ugm the biggest one in indonesia with other countries so it's very uh, good also to highlight this u to u Uh, collaboration because uh, a lot of activities involved in the program. So uh, that's all uh, from me. And of course, I'm uh, waiting for the recommendation of this joint research. So if possible, would you please send uh, formally the recommendation of this joint research to the Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, Prof. Uh, Jagal, for supervising this joint research. And hopefully this will bring a, a, a good thing and also the benefit, a good insight for all of us in the future. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi. Uh, good day, everyone. Thank you very much, Professor Faisal Fadoni, for the keynote speech. Thank you very much once again. Ladies and gentlemen, next we will have a panel discussion with all of the experts from JICA. But before that, we will invite the representative from Universitas Gajah Mada, the representative from JICA Research Institute to have a photo session together, please. So, Professor Jagal Rizeso Marseno, all of the experts, please, from JICA and also from, I think, from the uh, representative of the Office of Directorate of Research, maybe, Pak Adi, to have a photo session together on the stage. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Please give applause for the, all of the experts. Thank you. And for the representative from Universitas Gajah Mada from JK Research Institute, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the most important part of today's program. We will have a panel discussion with several experts. Yes, thank you very much, Prof. Jagal for attending this program. And next, we would like to invite first moderator on today's meeting to chair the panel discussion. We invite, uh, please come to the stage. So our moderator today is Dr. Phil Fisia Ita Yulianto. May we introduce our moderator first? Dr. Fisia Ita Yulianto is a social scientist She is a researcher at the Center for Southeast Asian Social Studies, Universitas Gajah Mada, and adjunct lecturer in the Graduate Program of Performing and Visual Arts Studies, Universitas Gajah Mada. Her main area of expertise is post-coloniality, socio-cultural anthropology, cultural studies, and the anthropology of memory studies. She is also the managing editor of ICAT, the Indonesian Journal of Southeast Asian Studies from 1st August 2022 to 30 July 2023. She is a visiting associate professor at National Chengchi University, Taiwan. Dr. Ita received her PhD from University of Freiburg, Germany. All the experts will provide information and explanation according to their respective fields. To begin this discussion, we are pleased Dr. Phil Fisia Ita Yulianto to chair this panel discussion for the next 120 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, please give applause for our moderator, Dr. Fisia Ita. Thank you very much, Mas Adi, uh, the Honorable Rector, Vice Rectors, Professor Fatani, Mr. and Madam Speakers, distinguished guests, students, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
It is a pleasant duty for me to be serving as your moderator in this international webinar on research dissemination on the impact of study abroad in higher education in Indonesia. First of all, allow me to briefly inform you about the research itself. It is a collaborative research project between JICA Ogata Research Institute and top 10 universities in Southeast Asia, originally entitled Empirical Research on Impact of Study Abroad in Developing Countries based on study abroad experiences of academic professionals of major universities in ASEAN countries. It is UGM and ITB which become the participating universities from Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, this collaborative um, research was started in late 2019 and will continue until 2024. Today, JICA and uh, UGM and ITB will present the research findings on the impact of study abroad in higher education in Indonesia. And this panel is divided into two rounds. The first round is, will be conducted by JICA and ITB. I would like to invite then uh, Prof. Umemiya and Prof. Kayashima uh, to the States. The first round will be delivered by Prof. Kayashima and Prof. Umemiya from JICA Research Institute, as well as Prof. Yudi. They will each present uh, the, the materials for 15 minutes each. Uh, Prof. Umemiya, will you start, or Prof. Kayashima? Prof. Umemiya, okay. I will shortly read uh, his bio. So please welcome Prof. Naoki Umemiya. He teaches at the Center for Global Education and Discovery of Sophia University as professor. On second man from the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, since April 2022. Between July 2019 and March 2022, he was Deputy Director General, Human Development Department of JICA, leading the teams in charge of JICA's cooperation projects in higher education sector and social security sector in different regions of the world. He also teaches at Tokyo Institute of Technology as visiting professor. Previously, he worked or, for Malaysia Japan International Institute of Technology in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, as JICA expert and associate professor between 2019, 2013, and 2019. 16. Um, he holds an MAD from Harvard uh, Graduate School of Education and PhD from Tokyo Institute of Technology. He specializes in comparative and international education, especially quality assurance, internationalization of higher education, inter-university exchange and cooperation. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Prof. Umemia to present his presentations today. The time is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Prof. Kayashima who will go first for the presentation. I would like to also uh, introduce you to Prof. Kayashima. Um, she is currently a senior research advisor of JICA Ogata Sadako Research Institute for Peace and Development. She joined JICA after graduating from Kyoto University in 1982 and played a vital role in the planning and operations of JICA's education uh, cooperation programs. Before her current assignment, he served in various positions, including Senior Vice President in 2019 to 2021, Vice President of JICA in 2008 and 2018 to 2019, 
Director, Deputy Director of JICA RI Research Institute in 2016-2018, Senior Advisor for Education, Director General of Human Development Department, Chief Representatives of JICA in Bangladesh office as well. She received her PhD from Nagayo, sorry, Nagoya, Nagoya University for her research on the internalization of Japanese universities. Um, her current research interests include education cooperation, internationalization of higher education, and university participation in ODA. She just uh, published a paper, a very important paper, in 2022, entitled Japan's International Cooperation in Education, published by Springer. Prof. Kayashima, uh, the 15 minutes ahead is yours, please. Thank, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Uh, Professor Dr. Uh, uh, Digigal, Vice Rector of Education UGM, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Dr. Ita Ika, Vice Rector for Research and Community Service of UGM, uh, Dr. Faisal Fatani, Director of Research, Technology, and Community Service of the Ministry of Education, Professor Dr. Mustafa, Director of Research, UGM, Professor Dr. UD, ITB, Professor Dr. Wafu, UGM, Professor Dr. Hermin, UGM, dear participants of the seminar, it is my great pleasure and honor to be uh, invited to this seminar and to be given an opportunity to make a presentation uh, of my research project. Uh, we have been working together uh, with, between JICA and UGM uh, from 2019, and we have reached to the preliminary results of the, the uh, questionnaire survey and interview survey. So today I would like to present the initial analysis of the uh, questionnaire survey uh, in this seminar. So. Uh, my uh, uh, my uh, uh, presentation together with Naoki, my colleague, is composed by three parts. First three, I will present the overview of the research project, and secondly, I would like to, I'd like to present the analysis about the study abroad experiences of the faculty members of UGM and ITB, and thirdly, that part will be presented by my colleague Naoki, the analysis of the impacts of the study abroad. So this is the first part of my presentation. Uh, JICA Ogata Research Institute has initiated the empirical research project on the impact of study abroad of university faculty in 2019, as it was already explained by various uh, speakers. In developing countries, higher education has developed significantly over the past 70 years since independence. In Indonesia, world-class universities such as UGM or ITB have emerged. Study abroad of faculty members has played a major role in the development process of the universities. Uh, the, the Japanese government, uh, JICA, or other developed countries' government has supported the, the study abroad of faculty members through ODA. So therefore, the focus the purpose of this study is to examine the trajectory of faculty members study abroad as well as to analyze its impact. The impact on the, the personal aspects of the, the faculty members, but also the impacts on the development process of the universities themselves. For this study, we have chosen uh, 10 major universities in four countries Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Cambodia, and in Indonesia, UGM and ITB were selected. An international research team were then organized. 
with researchers from Japan and also from four uh, ASEAN countries. Fourteen members from Indonesia are participating to this research project. In this, uh, in this study, uh, quantitative and qualitative data were collected through questionnaire and interview surveys. The co questionnaire surveys at UGN ITB were conducted in, from 2019 to 2020, and the interviews were conducted in early 2022 in UGM. These, con uh, these questionnaire surveys were very challenging to conduct due to the outbreak of the, the pandemic. But thanks to the efforts of the Indonesian team, we could have a very large and very informative data set. Uh, here, on behalf of JICA, I'd like to express my deepest thanks to the effort of my uh, partner uh, team, uh, uh, research team members of Indonesia. The research team of each country are currently analyzing the data and findings will be compiled in the academic uh, publication or academic book or academic journals in the near future. So from here, I'd like to uh, uh, explain the results, a preliminary uh, analysis of the uh, questionnaire survey of UGM and ITB. So oh, the, these, uh, 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 yes, the, this graph shows the composition of the samples which we collected. Uh, you can see uh, we collected uh, the, the questionnaire survey yielded 833 valid responses out of around 3,000 total academic staff in UGM and it, ITB the responses reached more than 900 uh, out of the uh, 1,400 academic staff. Uh, it is uh, the 30% of the faculty members in UGM and 65% in ITB faculty members. So the response rate was very high. We could have a very large scale data set covering the majority of the uh, uh, faculty members in both institutions. The representativeness of the samples we collected, uh, uh, the, it is a little bit, how to say, the biased toward the STEM fields and the PhD, foreign PhD folders, especially in UGM. In case of ITB, since the coverage is very wide, the representativeness is very, very good. So oh, this slide shows the chronological change, change over time of the study abroad experience uh, of the faculty members, as well as the, the uh, study at home, study in Indonesia of the faculty members. Uh, the, you can see the majority of PhD holders uh, both in UGM and ITB, uh, the majority of PhD holders uh, have been obtaining their degrees abroad. But on the contrary, the number of lecturers who obtain their master degrees domestically has increased significantly since around 2000s. The, uh, when I compare uh, the difference between the UGM and ITB, maybe we can say that UGM uh, have the, the bigger share of the foreign degree holders compared to the ITB. So the, uh, the, the preference uh, towards the uh, foreign degrees is stronger in UGM uh, uh, rather than ITB. So oh, dividing this into fields, the numbers of foreign uh, PhD in STEM fields is very high. And the, yes, that, that this shows the, uh, the, the, the PhD holders 
uh, uh, yes, the PhD holder, the doctor level uh, study abroad experience, sees, as well as the, uh, the, the PhD holders from Indonesian universities. And this slide shows the uh, distribution uh, of the uh, master degree holders uh, according to the disciplines, divided into disciplines. Uh, you can see the, the domestic degrees are um, the majority in many or all of the disciplines, uh, both in UGM and ITB. From here, I'd like to show you the destination countries analysis. The, uh, the top uh, destination countries for study abroad in UGM are the Japan, Australia, and UK in master degree, and J Japan, Australia, and Germany for doctoral degree. In case of ITB, Japan, US, and France are the major three destination countries, both in master and doctoral programs. When we see the changes uh, and the distribution, uh, changes over time and distribution uh, between the top six uh, destination countries, uh, you can see at the master level, the that destination countries are very diversified, both in UGM and ITB. But on the contrary, in doctoral level, the, uh, the, the dominance, uh, Japan's dominance as a destination for doctoral degree programs are very uh, clear, especially from around 2000, both in UGM and the uh, ITB. And these uh, uh, pictures, these uh, figures, shows the uh, destination countries uh, according to the disciplines. And you can see the gray part, Japan, uh, Japan, which is represented by gray, gray, uh, gray color, is very, uh, stands out uh, in, in STEM fields, both in UGM and the ITB, and also both in master program and doctor program. Uh, also, maybe, the UK, uh, the, uh, the, sorry, the US and France are very uh, strong or the, the very big uh, in uh, ITB uh, uh, lecturers, among the ITB lecturers. And also we can see that the, in social sciences uh, uh, fields, the, the destination country are more diversified, so you can see a very colorful but here for the social science fields, and the, to some extent, the Australia is very strong, very big, uh, especially at master program level in UGM. Here, uh, this is the result. These are the results uh, of the question about the reason of the selection of study abroad and study at home. We can see the reason why they, the lecturer selected the study abroad option is that there are two main reasons. Uh, the one is the discipline more advanced in foreign countries, and another reason is the availability of scholarship. So it is same both in UGM and ITB. For the reason uh, uh, of the selection uh, of the study in Indonesia, the major reason is the, uh, uh, the availability of the scholarship or the, uh, the affordable cost of study and living in Indonesia. And uh, the, yes, but there is a slight difference between UGM and ITB. The appreciation of the disciplines in Indonesia is stronger, especially in younger generation in ITB rather than UGM. And also, uh, I don't know the reason why, but the recommendation the, uh, from the um, university or supervisor uh, in UGM, the older uh, the age of the lecturers, the share of that recommendation is bigger, but in 
ITB, on the contrary, among the younger generation in, in ITB, they responded uh, the uh, recommendation or assignment by the university ITB or supervisor was one of the major reasons. Maybe this is because of the, the difference of the, the faculty development systems between two institutions or the school culture. Yes, uh, we also asked the reasons why they selected a specific destination country in the questionnaire. And the, uh, this, this graph shows the reasons of the selection of the destination country by each lecturer. Uh, we can see the, uh, uh, the some differences according to the destination country, the why these countries were selected. Uh, for US or UK or Japan or Germany, uh, the major reason, the biggest reason of the selection were the appreciation of the disciplines in these countries. And also the availability of scholarship is very big. But the, maybe we can say that Australia uh, in UGM here, or the France in ITB here, uh, the, uh, the availability uh, of scholarship as a reason is bigger than the appreciation of the discipline in these uh, countries. In case of Malaysia, uh, Malaysia is a little bit a different country among these countries, the developing, one of the developing countries. The, the, the biggest reason uh, of the selection of Malaysia destination country is the availability of the scholarship. Uh, this is my final uh, uh, slice uh, of the presentation. Uh, we asked also uh, in the questionnaire the future preference of the destination countries. If the lecturers are asked another chance to study abroad, or if the lecturers are asked any advice for, as a destination country uh, to their, uh, for their students. Uh, the UGM lecturers responded Japan, US, UK, or the ITB lecturers responded Australia, US, or Japan. And when uh, we divided uh, the respondents between SA, means the lecturers who studied abroad, and SH, the lecturers who studied in Indonesia, we can see a slight difference. The lecturers who studied abroad uh, preferred the U.S. at the destination, both in UGM and ITB. So the, the always there is a difference between the U, SA group and SH group in both of the institutions. And the appreciation of Indonesia at the destination country is bigger among the lecturers who studied uh, domestically, the Indonesia here and the Indonesia here. Sorry, the color is a little bit different, but Indonesia at the, the destination country here, for the future destination country here, is bigger here. Okay, so from here I'd like to, from here I'd like to uh, turn the microphone uh, to my colleague uh, uh, Naoki, and he will explain about the impacts of study abroad. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Ita, for your kind introduction at the beginning. And uh, thank you very much once again to all the UGM team for giving us this uh, wonderful opportunity. So let me uh, continue the presentation. So the, uh, this section is going to be about uh, analysis of differences in impact. And uh, we try to analyze the uh, responses to the questionnaire survey to compare impact of study experiences between the two groups. The first group staff who studied abroad, uh, we call it SA, and the other group staff who uh, studied their degrees in their home country of Indonesia. In terms of um, these different categories of activities, education, research, society, and management. And um, this is about uh, education-related uh, activities. So we asked the question, do you think your study experiences enhanced your skills and knowledge 
uh, in dealing with the following activities. So we presented a series of activities uh, shown here, uh, such as like developing education programs, uh, developing uh, courses, and so on. And um, the question was asked on uh, four-point Likert scale. So one is for to a large degree, and four is uh, not at all. So if the figure is smaller, the impact is larger. And um, this is the means of responses for SA, and this is the means of responses for SH. And as uh, you can see, um, average SA's responses are smaller than SH's on all items, which means um, larger impact for SA's. And this is for UGM. And the next slide is for ITB. Actually, we find the same tendency um, here. Average SA's responses are smaller than SH's, which means a larger impact on all the items here for education-related activities. If we go to research-related uh, activities, again, we ask the same question, presenting these uh, different types of activities. And again, um, this time, not for all the items, but uh, for most of the items, on average, um, SA's responses are smaller than SHS, so larger impact on many items except for uh, some items. This is for UGM. And again, we find a sort of similar uh, result for ITB. Here we found that uh, average SS responses are smaller than SHS or many items except for some. But uh, interestingly, here, um, this is for applying for patents. Um, here we have a smaller uh, means for SHs compared to SAs. So somehow larger impact in terms of applying for patents for SHs. Let me go to society related activities. This is for UGM. Um, compared to like education and research related activities here, we don't see a lot of differences, but still, um, this one uh, contributing to international academic societies, uh, we have higher, I mean, smaller average for SAs. But uh, contrary, um, this one contributing to joint activities with the domestic industrial sector, uh, somehow we um, see SAs' responses are smaller, meaning larger impact compared to SAs. This is for ITB. Um, again, for some items, we don't see big differences, but um, average SAs responses are smaller than SHs um, on, all, uh, on some items. And actually, these I um, items are all international um, activities. For example, this is contributing to joint activities with the international industrial sector, and so on. Now it's about uh, management-related activities for UGM. And we found uh, differences uh, between the two groups for two activities. Um, th this is uh, agreement uh, with overseas universities. And this is um, universities joining international inter-university networks. And again, this, for these international activities, we found that uh, average SA's responses are smaller than SHs. This is for UGM. And um, we, we got a similar result for ITB here. So um, this is a very tentative conclusion uh, for section number four. Uh, study abroad experiences had a positive impact in many aspects in terms of these different categories of activities. Although, of course, it's not for all the aspects, as you saw, um, for, for example, for like, uh, applying for patent, um, 
SHG's average are smaller, meaning larger uh, impact, and so on. Let me go to the uh, section number five. This is the analysis of differences in impacts by country of study abroad destination. And this is for UGM. Um, we asked the respondents um, which types of activities have been mostly accelerated with their experiences from study abroad or study home. And uh, for example, this is uh, for those who uh, came back from Australia. So this blue color is education, domestic education activities. So 42% of them responded that uh, domestic education activities have been mostly um, accelerated, right? Um, so we can see um, differences across these um, different countries of destination. So um, education was mostly accelerated for um, Australia uh, or France, um, UK, US, um, Indonesia, right? Um, but uh, research was mostly accelerated for um, Japan. Here we have a large proportion of uh, respondents saying that uh, research activities were mostly accelerated. Uh, same for uh, like Germany, um, Netherlands, sorry, this is Malaysia, and Netherlands. And interestingly, if we look at specifically this um, orange, sorry, yellow color, um, this is for international research activities. So somehow uh, Australia, uh, Japan, and also Malaysia and Netherlands, um, a lot of uh, people are saying that uh, they, have, um, they are very um, sort of um, international research activities are mostly accelerated. That this is for UGM. And if we go to ITB, again, we, have, um, we can see differences across um, different countries of destinations. Education for Australia, France, US, research for Australia, Japan, UK, and Netherlands. And interestingly, um, if you look at uh, those who studied at home um, in Indonesia, domestic society activities or uh, management activities were mostly accelerated. So a big proportion here. Okay, a um, few more slides. This is about um, um, comparison in impacts in education-related activities across different countries of destination for UGM, right? So um, the smaller the bar is, the larger the impact is. So here we, have, we, we see strong impact for Australia and UK. And we also try to divide the activities into two categories, domestic types of um, activities, uh, education activities, and international education activities. And still, we find a similar trend. So Australia, UK strong. Here, Australia, UK strong for international activities as well. Interestingly, if we go to ITB, different countries are strong. Here, Germany and Netherlands. Okay, let me continue to um, research related activities at UGM. We have Japan and Netherlands, uh, strong impact. And uh, again, interestingly, if we go to ITB, here we have the same uh, sort of result. Japan and Netherlands. Um, these are the two countries um, which show a stronger impact compared to the other countries of destinations. But if we go to like domestic um, research activities, then somehow Germany and Nether Netherlands are strong at ITB. Right? So that was the uh, analysis by destination countries. And this is the last section, so discussion and way forward. Um, we would like to further investigate fa uh, factors that promote 
these differences, as you saw, um, that there, there are differences across uh, countries. So we would very much appreciate it if you, I mean, participants in this seminar can provide your, you know, ideas and thoughts about why there is such a difference across countries in terms of impact in different types of activities. And um, for further analysis, um, we may be uh, going to do a cross-university comparison in Indonesia between UGM and ITB. As you saw, there are some differences between the two universities. Um, and then uh, we would also like to do in the future cross-country comparison um, across these uh, four participating countries. And for that, uh, we are going to do a focus group discussion with faculty members. Actually, we have done it yesterday at, uh, with I, uh, UGM uh, scholars. And uh, next week, we are going to visit ITB to do this. And uh, we are also planning to do uh, interviews with uh, top management and also uh, selected faculty members. So that's the end of our presentation. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, <coughs> Prof. Kayashima and Prof. Umemiya for the presentations. This first round is followed by Prof. Yudi Suharyadi, who is also presenting about the trajectory and impacts of study abroad, experiences of academic staff at UGM and ITB. He will focus on ITB side. Prof. Yudi Suharyadi, are you available on the screen? He's joining us from Bandung. Yes, I am. Great. Okay, Can ladies and gentlemen. Okay, okay. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me introduce Prof. Uh, Yudi Suharyadi. Uh, he's a lecturer at the Mathematics Department, Institute of Technology, Bandung. His expertise is in the analysis of partial differential equations. He finished his undergraduate degree in mathematics from ISB in 1988, and then completed the doctoral program in mathematics from the University of Memphis in 2000. And in 2000. Upon a brief stint, uh, as an instructor at the Southern Illinois University at Carbondale, USA, he returned to ITB in 2001. Apart from doing research in mathematics, uh, publishes, publishes articles, holding a few visiting positions, traveling to conferences, he enjoys teaching from all level of undergraduate and graduate courses, from the basic calculus, to the more advanced graduate analysis courses, supervising students from undergraduate to doctoral degree as well. Dr. Suharyadi has quite a heavy engagement in administrative side in his, in his academic career. He was the chair of graduate studies in mathematics 2006-2007 Chair of the Undergraduate Program in Mathematics 2009-2010. As Manager of Research of um, MIPA for, for an extended time in 2011-2020. Uh, to 2020. He is also involved in the effort of international accreditation, quality assurance and being part of the team of managing institutional grants. He has a very long list of publications, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, without further ado, I would like to invite Prof. Yudi. The time is yours, please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ita, for your, um, uh, for your very precious introductions. Uh, Distinguished guest, uh, it is a pleasure for me to be in this e event. Uh, I thank uh, uh, the our colleagues in uh, my colleagues in the UGM for uh, holding this uh, event, and it is my appreciation to to my uh, to our uh, partners in this uh, research, 
uh, Prof. Uemiya, Dr. Kayashima from JICA Research Institute, Okata Research Institute. Uh, it has been a, a pleasure to be in this, uh, in these collaborations. Uh, the, the results presented has been, I think uh, that's uh, very much uh, comprehensive, uh, albeit some, some of the, something that we have to complete it earlier for, for further studies. But so far, it's a pretty much uh, give a portrait, uh, an honest portrait of what happened in ITB and in UGM as well. So I would like to um, give a remark and send you a few just a few, uh, of ITB uh, experienced in that the in this directions. So uh, my I present my screen. Let's see. Okay, uh, can you see now the, the screen? Yes, we can see that. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's just very uh, a brief uh, presentation. Um, Uh, this type of uh, studies actually has been long sought in ITB uh, for many purposes. Uh, it is our bad habit actually when we decide on things. We didn't. We don't wait for for the the, uh, the preliminary studies, uh, background studies, but more depend on. Well, uh, I we feel that this is the way. So. Let's execute this one. So this gives me uh, give us actually a lot of explanations what we have been doing for uh, for the last maybe 15, 10 years uh, in improving graduate studies and institutional planning. So uh, that's one reason that I jump into this uh, collaborations when we are offered this uh, to join in this uh, in this endeavor. In that was in the mid two thousand nineteen. Yes. So uh, I would like to tell you a little bit about what we are uh, doing in uh, in ITB. Uh, this is a part of the uh, grant, institutional grant called I'm here. Uh, Indonesia managing higher education for relevance and uh, I forgot what is the last E excellence I think, where uh, Professor Bagio uh, is the the, the a country senior consultant is the one of the reviewer here. So. Uh, uh, for this project, we at the FBPA designed a, a program, a pilot project called the Outstanding Doctoral Program. So it is a, uh, say, a request doctoral program uh, aimed for research, sorry, for fresh uh, undergraduate or uh, fresh alumni of undergraduate uh based on grants to labs research group so uh in contrary to the traditional doctoral program where doctor uh candidates uh with the with the supervisor uh, try to find uh, the uh, the topics then in this project we really the uh compelled to main idea of the immersion into existing research activities so uh, with this enrichment experience, uh, we provide also sandwich networking. So experience of managing grants, teaching assistancy for the, uh, for the candidates. So basically we draw in this uh, graduate school experience from, from a lot of the, many of uh, the uh, faculty uh, experience from various countries, mostly from Japan though. This is the model from, from Japan actually. Germany, Netherlands, US, a little bit, but um, later we see that the, the, the US model in giving a lot of enrichment experience in, in teachings uh, 
does not work well in this uh, very tight schedule. And we, we implement this program from 2010 till 2012. I think we, we have quite a few graduate, uh, excellent uh, alumni of this program to become the, the uh, become the faculty member the, uh, across Indonesia. So um, in 2000, uh, 2015, yes, that's the, uh, it is the morph into adapted into, adopted into a national program for the PMDSU. Uh, as I was the, the involved in the monitoring, the quality assurance of PMDSU in, in ITB, so uh, I know UKM also have a quite a lot of the, the uh, PhD candidates in, in this uh, PMDSU program. So, um, what we uh, observe that it's that's now that some aspect of this program has become mainstream so it's it's become almost become the norm in uh, at ITV sometimes in in terms of the uh, grants to the lab how the uh, research grant uh, one of the indicators is involving uh, doctoral pro doctoral students those kind of uh, things uh, the the timelines, doctoral program timelines, also that's one of the things that we uh, start from the establishment of the, this program. So uh, I think in this, uh, I think batch, now it's batch six or is it coming batch seven this, uh, this year. So uh, this kind of program, it, it, we aim in the beginning to somehow to narrow the experience of study abroad and studying at home. So, uh, and I think that it's, it is time for us to evaluate the program. So how we are able to approach the, uh, the experience of studying uh, abroad and studying uh, domestically at, uh, at home. So, So um, that's what I would like to uh, to just a, just a brief remark on uh, what we're doing in in uh, related to uh, the uh, to this a uh, research of the uh, and trajectories of the uh, research or a graduate studies experience in. Uh, abroad. Okay, so with this, I would like to end my uh, short presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Yudi. Let's give him applause. <laughs> All right, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, we come to the question and answer sessions. For the discussions, I would like to invite the first round for two questions. Uh, I think the materials today is far more than interesting. This is imperative to be further discussed by every one of us in the uh, higher education. So I would like to see from the um, from the screen. Do we have? Or okay, we will start with Prof. Yudi. Uh, he's he's. He's here with us on site. Prof. Yudi, please, the time is yours. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, good morning. I think very interesting uh, presentation from the sensei. And I see about the data that the Japanese university dominates uh, in the yeah, last 10 years until 2015 and maybe 2020. But recently, many applications, I mean many Indonesian students want to study abroad in uh, mostly in another country, like in Europe and also in Australia. And 
in my mind the considering uh, consideration one is the reasoning one is about the difficulty of the language yeah, especially for the social science so uh, what do you think uh, and uh, I see that in Japanese university is very strong in natural science engineering and also maybe in agriculture yeah. but maybe difficult uh, for us to study for the economic, social, and so on because uh, the uh, language backgrounds. And also, I have been a LPDP interviewer, LPDP as once agency, uh, Indonesian Scholarship Agency. Every year is uh, available more than 3,000 uh, awardee. And mostly, I select from uh, many university in Indonesia and apply to, uh, yeah, like European country, uh, USA, and also Australia because the uh, language consideration. So, what is your strategy? I think to make uh, or to make back uh, stable. Uh, that the Indonesian student apply to the Japanese uh, university. In my mind, there is some, I mean, some uh, strategy like negotiation with the Indonesian scholarship agency, LPDP, to make uh, open uh, recruitment for, especially for Japan, with the, I mean, with the bargaining position that Japanese uh, government also open recruitment for Indonesia for some numbers, for, for example, like 100 uh, wardi or scholarship available for Indonesian and then Indonesian govern government also the same number to open recruitment for Japanese university the same number. I think this is just my idea to, yeah, to make uh, motivation uh, for the, I mean the young people to study abroad in Japan, especially in engineering, and natural science and also agriculture because in social maybe some difficulties yeah, considering about the language. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Yudi. Um, we will keep his question first. Uh, I would like to invite one more uh, question. Do we have one more on site? Yes, Prof, please, the time is yours. Thank you very much, Kuita. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, uh, Sensei. <clears throat> My name is Marcos Giancaro, the director of Research Institute in Universitas Tinggi Malang, uh, East Java University. Uh, <clears throat> My first question is just simple. How open is the uh, JICA and Japanese funding for uh, low-level university strength? Because uh, we have many universities in Indonesia. Yeah, we know already ITP, UKM, and uh, Universitas of Indonesia is a top level of uh, Indonesia rank in, uh, in Indonesia. But uh, how open is and how strong the eager of uh, Japanese uh, funding research like the JICA to offer the funding research or study abroad for uh, middle or low level of uh, education universities. And then the second one, actually uh, lecturers in Universitas Negeri Malang in my university uh, not so uh, eagerly to go abroad to study. Normally they, they choose only uh, national universities to uh, study even for doctoral degree as well as for master degrees. Even they have already passed the language uh, for IELTS or uh, any other languages, but uh, they always postpone their, their uh, going to study abroad until uh, five or even ten years, and then they choose uh, study in Indonesia. I don't know, maybe, maybe ITB or UGM or maybe in JICA or Japanese side have this kind of uh, problem like in my universities. Even our universities also giving uh, special 
funding for study for for my own lecture from my from from the university uh, side, not from the government or even not from the uh, JICA or any other funding from international. Thank you, Vita. Thank you very much for Parto for very interesting question. So I would like to uh, ask Prof Kayashima and Prof Umemiya for for the response, please. Thank you very, thank you very much for uh, a very uh, important questions and comments. Uh, as for the first uh, questions. Uh, maybe we have to say that Japan is not a very strong destination country for social sciences. And the, partly it is because of the, the, the question of the language of education. But the, uh, recently, uh, the social science programs, uh, even in master level, uh, the, which are given in English, uh, is increasing in Japan. So we hope that the Indonesian students uh, will apply to these uh, the, uh, the, the, the master programs in social science taught in English. Uh, the, the Indonesian candidates will apply to that to that that uh, that programs. And the, I'd like to mention that the. Uh, maybe uh, each destination country may have their own strengths and weaknesses. So the, if the UK or US or Australia might be more uh, the appropriate or stronger or better destination country, that will be very also good. Japan will accept more students in STEM fields, but the, to some extent, Japan is also uh, very happy, we are very happy to receive the student in social sciences. And I want to say also that the, the purpose of the, the uh, study abroad is not only the issue of the question of the language itself. Maybe the social sciences taught in Japan or social sciences which international students can learn in Japan might be some different perspective may have some different perspective from the Western countries. Since Japan is no Western country, and Japan is the first country uh, uh, which was successful for the modernization and the, the development uh, as a non-Western uh, country. So from that point of view, maybe there might be some point to be learned so I hope that the, even though the number of the students in social sciences who we run in Japan is not very, very numerous, not very big, but the, I hope that the, there will be some aspects, some attractive aspects uh, which are different from the study abroad experiences in European countries in social sciences. Thank you very much. And the Japan have to also do its efforts to increase the social science programs taught in English in order to accept more international students in Japan. That is also contribute, uh, that contributes also to the internationalization of the Japanese university. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Prof, for your questions. Um, with regard to the first question, um, the uh, there are different types of uh, like scholarship programs uh, provided, provided by the Japanese government and JICA. Um, roughly speaking, there are like two types, and one, pro one type of programs is um, for like um, specific institutions. So there are sometimes target universities uh, for the program, uh, UGM, ITB, uh, most of the times uh, top universities. Um, in that case, um, probably only the, uh, the uh, uh, staff of those targeted universities are the target of the program. On the other hand, the second type of programs um, is like open for um, everyone. So for example, like mixed, mixed scholarship, um, it's not uh, limited to only a few universities, but uh, 
for the whole you know, population. Um, as long as the candidates can meet the requirements, uh, like in entrance examination requirements of a Japanese university. Um, so that is available for uh, like graduates and staff of um, uh, middle or uh, lower level institutions, uh, I suppose. And then about the uh, second question, um, the, that's a very important um, problem that we face, I believe. And uh, one possible solution is going to establish more sort of um, joint degree type of programs between the um, Indonesian universities and, uh, for example, Japanese universities. Um, then probably uh, one year in Japan, one year in Indonesia, that could also address uh, some parts of the issues you uh, mentioned, I believe. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Kayashima and Prof. Umemiya for the response. Um, I would like to follow, I, I see from the screen in fact, from the screen, the next, the next question. Can you show me the screen? I think Prof. Deng is ready. Professor Deng, are you there? Jian Bang Deng. Yes, I am. Yes, I can see the, the, the screen. Sorry. Okay, good. <laughs> good, thank you. Prof. Jian Bang Deng is, uh, is a professor of sociologists from Taiwan, from Tamkang University. Thank you for joining us. Yes, your question, please. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for uh, time to invite me to join this uh, uh, webinar meeting and this is a very nice uh, to hear the uh, presentation uh, from uh, uh, Dr. Hayashima uh, and uh, <coughs> Professor uh, Meiya. And the question is, uh, we see uh, the uh, the student outcome when they uh, present their uh, learning experiences uh, in studying abroad, they are we happy uh, <laughs> to see uh, the studying abroad they can uh, enhance their uh, education related activities, but not only education related, but also uh, research related. Uh, society related uh, and uh, management related activities. So this is a very nice, uh, we see uh, the studying abroad uh, is very powerful uh, for students uh, study abroad. And my question is, uh, we see the statistic uh, uh, among the top uh, 10 destinations only three from uh, Asia is Japan, number one, and Australia and Thailand. So probably uh, we see in the recent uh, international mobility students play a very important role. And probably uh, in Asia and Taiwan is also part of uh, Asia, Asia countries, then probably we can intense the cooperations uh, inside the Asia countries. So uh, probably then, uh, Next time, if we do the survey, we can see the student when they uh, choose the destination countries. There could be more uh, Asia countries uh, in their in their candidate uh, uh, destinations. So we uh, here in Taiwan, we also see uh, more and more Indonesia student come to Taiwan to study uh, for the semester program or doctor program. So probably. Uh, I think in the inside the Asia, probably we were to enhance the uh, the so-called uh, south-south mobilities instead of only uh, south uh, to north mobilities. So in that way, probably uh, the uh, east the Asia country uh, could uh, work more closer, and then uh, we let the student uh, from the both side from uh, the Indonesia to uh, Japan. Japan student to to Indonesia, but also inside uh, the Asia countries, uh, we uh, let the student can uh, have more opportunity to study uh, 
among our uh, countries, and this will be a good feature uh, for the further uh, cooperations in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Deng. Um, I think Prof. Deng is interested for the students' mobility within, within Asia, not only for master and doctoral students, but also for undergraduate students. Um, maybe later you respond. I will pick up one more question from the screen. May, may I see the screen, please? Prof. Bustami, I think, is also there. Prof. Rifani Bustami uh, from the from Unif National University of uh, Malaysia. Are you there? He's still muted. Or let me have who raised uh, his or her hand over here. While waiting, while waiting, maybe uh, I would like to give the chance to Prof. Omemia and Prof. Kayashima, please, response to Prof. Jian Bangdeng's uh, question. I, I think this is also related to uh, Prof. Yudi's questions, how to maintain strategy, uh, the number of students from, from, from Indonesia, from Southeast Asian countries to study to Japan. It was also one of the questions, I think. Yes, time is yours. Thank you very much for very valuable comments and questions from, from Taiwan. I'm very impressed to, to have discussion uh, between, uh, in here, uh, between us and the, the, the Taiwan professors. Uh, as for the uh, questionnaire survey we conducted, that is a questionnaire survey. Uh, for the uh, faculty, all the faculty members of UGM and ITB. So it means the very established university in Indonesia and faculty members cover the all ages. So the, the destination countries uh, of the stud their study abroad were rather, uh, how to say, biased or the, the focused or more established destination countries like the US, UK, Japan, uh, Australia, etc. But we can see a slight change over time and the, among the younger generation, we found some lecturers who studied in Singapore, in Malaysia, uh, or in Thailand. And uh, if we compare the uh, whole students who studied abroad nowadays from Indonesia maybe the picture are very, very different. So the, uh, we have to say that the result, our result is only limited to the current body of lecturers in UGM and U, uh, ITB. Uh, we understand nowadays the regional mobility within uh, Asia or within ASEAN is very strong, and many of the students are going uh, between Indonesia, and the Taiwan or Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore, etc. That trend is also very important and very interesting to be analyzed. Uh, the, so the, maybe we would like to, to, to study for the next subject of the research. And add to that question from Dr. Ita, I think already we have some degree of the mobility within the region. Japan and the Southeast Asia, but the, uh, it seems to us what is important is not only sending the student, but the more institutional relationship or networking between universities or the collaboration in research or exchange of faculties, etc., etc., uh, the various uh, types of uh, collaboration or the relationship or networking between the institutions will prepare the exchange of the student. So the more, how to say, the comprehensive, integrated approach might be more uh, effective. Maybe the, the Naoki may add some. Thank you very much. Just to add, um, 
Thank you very much um, that comment from Taiwan. Uh, we very much appreciate it. Um, yes, I also think that this trend of uh, um, increasing number of uh, students uh, moving around within the region um, is going to be strengthened uh, in the coming years, definitely. Um, as, for example, ASEAN University Network is uh, trying to promote um, within the region mobility of students and also like CMIO, uh, right head, um, the, they are also uh, trying to promote the, uh, within the uh, region mobility uh, in ASEAN by providing scholarships uh, for short-term visits um, um, between universities in ASEAN uh, countries. So maybe these short-term visit programs will lead to uh, longer uh, study abroad programs in the future. Therefore, um, entire um, region mobility, I believe, is going to be uh, strengthened and promoted in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think uh, we can move to uh, participants here from the Ballet Senate. I see Prof. Kuat is joining us as well. Prof. Kuat. <laughs> Would you please give your response uh, to our study, to the presentations today? For your information, Prof. Kuat is the inventor of the genos for COVID-19. Yes? The time is yours. We insist. <laughs> um, he has a very interesting story and experiences when studied in Japan as well. And he gave us uh, a very rich insights on the challenges and also uh, the benefits of, of studying in Japan at that time, yeah. Uh, I think it will be also good that we also know about more about his response on this dissemination. Thank you very much, Prof. Kuat. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, actually, I follow this kind of seminar yesterday, but uh, today I have to. Uh, comment about the uh, study abroad, especially in Japan. I myself uh, graduated from Kyushu University, and in my experience, uh, Japan and Europe is totally different for me because uh, recently I have a recent collaboration with uh, some university in Europe. In Japan, we live in a laboratory almost 24 hours a day. <laughs> the, the, the laboratory is open almost uh, uh, 24 hours for, for us, for students. But in uh, Europe, the laboratory closed uh, at uh, 5 o'clock in the evening. It's totally different. But, uh, Make us in Kachama, the university, for example, uh, most of stuff from graduate from Japan right now is a more productive, high productivity compared to other uh, graduation from another country right now, especially in uh, my faculty. So this is also. Uh, benefit for us uh, studying in Japan is to see similar hard work and maybe small uh, smart work <laughs> and in, in Europe is a very short time for study but uh, very uh, uh, regulated and then 
I mean that the structure of a curriculum is also almost different between the Japanese and Europe. So this is my opinion, and uh, the positive thing of our study in Japan is also uh, uh, very high, I think. And we work hard here, like in Japan, and uh, as we know that we have more productive than other graduation from other country. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Buat, for sharing your experience. Um, would you like to respond, Prof. Umemia and Prof. Kashima? Thank you, Thank you very much. We are very happy that the very eminent professor uh, studied in Japan and he, he, he learned something in Japan and he making a very big achievement here in Gajamada. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to uh, uh, make a short comment on that. The, you mentioned about the, the, the difference of the working style. Uh, of, of the uh, researchers or lecturers between Japan and the US. Uh, I'm not very, very sure that the, the working 24 hours in Japan is a very good aspect or the strength of Japan or not. In nowadays, the, sometimes that type of the working style is criticized in the, in the, in the public administration or the, in the teaching profession, etc. So, but anyway, the the one of the impacts of study abroad is not only the transfer of the technology or knowledge or system themselves, but at the same time, the culture, the uh, school culture uh, or the different uh, uh, types of thinking uh, are introduced. We heard uh, in our uh, study that, the, for example, more uh, open relationship between students and teachers uh, in, were introduced from the study abroad experience in the United States. And more very, I would say, rigorous, more hardworking uh, uh, style in, the, in Japanese laboratory, the laboratory of Japanese university were introduced from Japan. So the impact of the study abroad is not only the knowledge and technology, but also the cultural aspects. Uh, uh, also uh, changing, and the, maybe the mixture of the different uh, uh, culture or the choices of the different aspect of the different countries' uh, culture or the systems might be a uh, create the better one here. So it is not necessary to introduce, but the bad aspects, the less effective aspect of Japanese system and the, maybe the professor introduced the best aspects only to Gajamada and the, he made a very good success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Kayashima, for the response. Um, very interesting. Uh, I would like to... Uh, we still have five minutes to go for the questions and answers session for this first round. So I would like to invite one more uh, participants to to deliver a question or response to this dissemination of studying abroad in UGM and also in ITB. Um, maybe to have one response from ITB, from lecturers from ITB or students from ITB will be a good idea. Do we have one? Or we, we had a uh, male uh, commentators so far. I, I don't know if this is also gender bias. <laughs> so please, one question from female lecturer. Ah, oh. she's coming, I think. Baririn. <laughs> do you want to deliver, do you want to respond to say something? <laughs> We need one female <laughs> lecturer. Or the students may also comment, please. If you're thinking about your future destinations for your scholarship uh, program later, to which university, to which uh, country do you want to go, it is also very interesting. Anyone?
Everybody looks very serious. <laughs> no one? Okay. Um, I saw at a glance on the screen, in fact, Prof. Rivani Bustami from University, uh, University, Na National University of Malaysia, which is raised to stand. Would you like to respond, Prof. Bustami? Can you please show us the screen? Okay, but the timekeeper shows me that time is up just now. No. <laughs> I apologize. This All right. Is, uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes, please. Oh, okay, yes. Somebody who raised, uh, Mr. or Madam, who raised uh, his or her hand, please do respond. Yes. Let me introduce myself. My name is Tania. Uh, I'm from the University Muhammadiyah Cirebon, and then I was a lecturer in the that time of the university. I maybe I want to ask some question about the uh, postdoc in uh, by using the JICA scholarship. I already finished my study one year uh, later in Osaka University, and then uh, any point, any uh, I mean uh, any possible if the after finish one year uh, letter uh, doctor doctoral program uh, there is a scholarship from JICA uh, for the postdoc in. University in Japan, uh, and then uh, the requirement for to get the JICA is similar uh, in the doctoral programs or not? I think that's my question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your uh, question. Um, about the opportunities for uh, postdoctoral study or research, um, JICA itself does not provide a lot of programs for postdoc studies, but uh, there's another institution of the Japanese government who is in charge of um, providing fellowships for postdoc studies, which is the um, organization called JSPS. Um, I cannot tell you that. Um, what, does, what it does uh, stand for for the moment, but uh, uh, it's the um, Japan Science Promotion um, Agency. So it's called JSPS, and they uh, provide some uh, fellowship programs for uh, postdoc opportunities for your information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Thank you very much, Prof. Memia. Uh, Cirebon is uh, in West Java, so the, I think this is also related to the second question from a lecturer from Malang, from East Java, uh, towards the um, what is it, the the the, ca the chance for doing what is it, for getting scholarships from Japan for universities outside ITB and UGM. All right, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm afraid that I have to tell you that the time is up for the first round. So uh, let us give applause to our three speakers and our questioners. Uh, we will have a five minutes break uh, before we start the second round. Thank you.
Universitas Gajah Mada or UGM is a public university renowned as the People's University which strives for and puts forward the interests of the citizens and nation of Indonesia. As a higher education institution that has long been recognized by the society, we are proud of our timeless and tireless dedication to the nation. By cultivating, implementing, and leveraging education, research, and community services which constitute the salient objectives of Indonesian higher education or Tridharma, we remain committed to incessantly promoting the values of Pancasila. We exert the utmost effort to protect Indonesia's sovereignty in accordance with Pancasila ideology and the 1945 constitution. As a world-class university, UGM is devoted to the interests of the nation and humanity. We conduct research, provide education, and deliver community services by enhancing knowledge that benefits the community, the nation, and the world. We have been learning from one another and get stronger together since we believe that knowledge is not useful unless it is shared with others. The learning process will never cease developing. At UGM, we learn by continuously exploring sciences, learning from history, observing the present, and researching for the future. We always work hard and never give up. The learning and research processes at UGM continue to run together and explore state-of-the-art innovations. To create a convenient, environmentally friendly, and pollution-free green campus, UGM has built a wisdom park that substantiates the teaching and learning process. The park per se is open to the public. UGM has also developed drinking water facilities throughout the campus, provided by a drinking water supporting unit. This system is harnessed by the entire academic community of UGM. As the manifestation of its teaching endeavor, UGM operates various field laboratories for educational and research purposes. Furthermore, UGM has established and run a science techno park as an embodiment of its capability of inventing and commercializing a myriad of innovative health products, ranging from medical devices, herbal medicines, and healthy food. There are now more than 118,000 cases in 114 countries and 4,291 people have lost their lives. 2020 has been a tough year for anyone, and it is no exception for UGM. Campus activities are abruptly halted, student activities on campus are annulled, and everyone is forced to work, worship, and study from home. Lecturers have no choice but to learn how to teach effectively using the Information and Communication Technology or ICT. Learning and research on technology are strongly supported at UGM and in fact, we have conducted various cutting-edge technological research. Community Service or TKN is one of the most important courses to complete the study program which will be undergone by University of Gajah Mada or UGM in 2020 while adapting online courses system. Supported by the Ministry of Education, UGM will continue its service within the society across Indonesia during the pandemic issue. Lecturers and researchers at UGM continue carrying out basic and applied research in many realms. 
For instance, studies in the health sector to cope with COVID-19 are being encouraged and accelerated as a form of UGM's commitment to mitigating disaster using scientific methods. One of the most innovative inventions regarding to mitigating the COVID-19 is GINOS, a screening tool or early detector of patients exposed to COVID-19 which is able to identify the symptom through exhale within 80 seconds. Genos is highly reliable. It has a number of advantages as a COVID-19 fast detection tool. Its sensor is able to detect more than thousands of patients in the long term, while providing relatively fast results, non-invasive and affordable. In addition, its uses also applies non-rebreathing masks and disposable HEPA filter. Those challenges somehow direct or even force us to innovate and modify approaches. Success is a journey, which necessitates smart work through learning, studying, and sacrificing. Despite all that, most of all, we love what we do. Universitas Gajah Mada or UGM is a public university renowned as the People's University which strives for and puts forward the interests of the citizens and nation of Indonesia. As a higher education institution that has long been recognized by the society, we are proud of our timeless and tireless dedication to the nation. By cultivating, implementing, and leveraging education, research, and community services which constitute the salient objectives of Indonesian higher education or Tridharma, we remain committed to incessantly promoting the values of Pancasila. We exert the utmost effort to protect Indonesia's sovereignty in accordance with Pancasila ideology and the 1945 constitution. As a world-class university, UGM is devoted to the interests of the nation and humanity. We conduct research, provide education, and deliver community services by enhancing knowledge that benefits the community, the nation, and the world. We have been learning from one another and get stronger together since we believe that knowledge is not useful unless it is shared with others. The learning process will never cease developing. At UGM, we learn by continuously exploring sciences, learning from history, observing the present, and researching for the future. We always work hard and never give up. The learning and research processes at UGM continue to run together and explore state-of-the-art innovations. To create a convenient, environmentally friendly, and pollution-free green campus, UGM has built a wisdom park that substantiates the teaching and learning process. The park per se is open to the public. UGM has also developed drinking water facilities throughout the campus, provided by a drinking water supporting unit. This system is harnessed by the entire academic community of UGM. As the manifestation of its teaching endeavor, UGM operates various field laboratories for educational and research purposes. Furthermore, UGM has established and run a science techno park as an embodiment of its capability of inventing and commercializing a myriad of innovative health products, ranging from medical devices, herbal medicines, and healthy food. There are now more than 118,000 cases in 114 countries and 4,291 people 
have lost their lives. 2020 has been a tough year for anyone, and it is no exception for UGM. Campus activities are abruptly halted, student activities on campus are annulled, and everyone is forced to work, worship, and study from home. Lecturers have no choice but to learn how to teach effectively using the Information and Communication Technology or ICT. Learning and research on technology are strongly supported at UGM and in fact, we have conducted various cutting-edge technological research. Community Service or KKN is one of the most important courses to complete the study program which will be undergone by University of Gajah Mada or UGM in 2020 while adapting online courses system. Supported by the Ministry of Education, UGM will continue its service within the society across Indonesia during the pandemic issue. Lecturers and researchers at UGM continue carrying out basic and applied research in many realms. For instance, studies in the health sector to cope with COVID-19 are being encouraged and accelerated as a form of UGM's commitment to mitigating disaster using scientific methods. One of the most innovative inventions regarding to mitigating the COVID-19 is GINOS, a screening tool or early detector of patients exposed to COVID-19 which is able to identify the symptom through exhale within 80 seconds. Genos is highly reliable. It has a number of advantages as a COVID-19 fast detection tool. Its sensor is able to detect more than thousands of patients in the long term, while providing relatively fast results, non-invasive and affordable. In addition, its uses also applies non-rebreathing mask and disposable HEPA filter. Those challenges somehow direct or even force us to innovate and modify approaches. Success is a journey, which necessitates smart work through learning, studying, and sacrificing. Despite all that, most of all, we love what we do. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the second round of this uh, international webinar. Uh, we will have two presentations from Prof. Wahyu Supartono and also Prof. Hermin Indah Wahyuni. Um, the first is Prof. Wahyu Supartono who will share about quantitative report on the impact of study abroad for academic professionals in Universitas Gajah Mada. And the second one will be delivered by Prof. Hermin Indah Wahyuni, uh, who will be sharing about the impact of study abroad in strengthening the three pillars of higher education in Universitas Gajah Mada, its realization and breakthrough. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to uh, invite Prof. Wahyu Supartono uh, on the stage. Prof. Wahyu Supartono is the head of the uh, Master Program of Higher Education and Management. Uh, he graduated from Faculty of Agricultural Technology, Universitas Gajah Mada, and got his uh, Dr. Red Nat from Universität Hohenheim in Stuttgart, Germany, in the field of uh, food quality analysis. Food quality analysis, very important. He attended University Staff Development Program in 2002 at University of Kassel uh, in Wenzenhausen in Germany as well. He was a country representative of German alumni on food network uh, called Gafun in 2006 to 2012. And as presidium member of Indonesian alumni of University Staff Development in 2007 to 2017 and now becomes member of Indo Staff Board of Trustee. He works as a lecturer and researcher at the department of, in the Department of Agro-Industrial Technology, UGM, since 19, 
1989. He served as Director of Finance and uh, uh, HRD at the Center for Food and Nutrition Studies of UGM in 2001-2004, Head of Collaboration Division at Institute of Research and Community Service in 2004-2008, Indonesian Representative at ASEAN European Meeting on Higher Education Secretariat in Bonn 2010 and Vice Dean for Collaboration and Alumni in 2012 and 2016. In 2000, starting from 2017 uh, until now, he has a duty as the head of the study program on Higher Education Management School of Graduates uh, graduate school in S or SPS, we call it in Indonesia SPS, in Universitas Gajah Mada. Uh, Prof. Wahyu, the time is yours, please. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Dr. Rita, for the nice introduction. Uh, dear um, participant in, in Ballet Senate and also uh, on, online, um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is my great honors. Uh, to present the result of the research, collaborative research with uh, JICA Research Institute, and especially in the quantitative uh, ones, a quantitative result that we have uh, conducted in uh, uh, Unsas Gajah Mada. This is especially of the Unsas Gajah Mada. And um, some of the results is already presented by uh, Professor Omemeya and also Professor uh, Kayasima. So I just uh, make a little bit highlight of the uh, uh, of this research. Okay, so my uh, our presentation outline. This is the aims of the quantitative research, and then the method and uh, how to uh, process the data, data processing, and then the respondent profile, and result in master program, and also result of the doctor program. Since uh, you have already um, heard from the. Um, uh, Professor Omemeya and also Professor uh, Kayasima about the result between UGM and uh, UGM and ITB. So we would like to just add up some uh, uh, short analysis and short result, and we make a, like a highlight. So this is the quantitative research uh, was conducted to find accurate data uh, and combine with the qualitative research one. So to become the UGM report, the quality, uh, qualitative report will be delivered by uh, my colleagues, uh, Professor Hermin, after this um, presentation. And uh, as I said before, the, our presentation, this presentation is the highlight of research result. The aim of the research, as you see in the, in the screen, this is to evaluate the impact of the study abroad experience of academic professional on the development of the Universitas Gajah Mada. So um, this is the introduction of the collaborators already mentioned by uh, um, two speakers before uh, from JICA Research Institute. And then after that, so we have, uh, or we have um, some basis um, um, data for the policy uh, recommendation of the future implementation of study abroad program, especially in Ustaz Gajamada. So just not only uh, the go uh, uh, the program without any uh, design, but uh, hopefully uh, based on this research result, we can uh, design uh, where the people go and what kind of the science uh, will be uh, going into the deeper uh, study. And this is the quantitative method. So the questionnaire was um, survey um, was conducted at the uh, beginning of 20, uh, uh, 2020 and 2022, uh, 21. And uh, we gained uh, 853 respondents of the UGM lectures. And as I said before, they collected uh, through the uh, CMaster platform. So we, uh, we had um, uh, the questionnaire from JICA, and then we make a modification. And then we can um, um, put in, uh, upload it in the uh, CMaster program. Yeah, from the results uh, you said here, the questionnaire uh, survey um, at the first phase, that is 600 respondents were um, gathered in the uh, first round between January uh, 13, 2020 to February 2020. 
and then after that, so because of the um, the number of the um, our respondent, uh, mostly lecturer and Saskia uh, Jahmada is around 2,900. So we try to uh, increase the uh, uh, the response from the lectures, and then uh, we got uh, 253 respondent by the second round. This is of February, and then one of them um, we did uh, online. Uh, Online meeting with the um, uh, with the respondent, and uh, it was in uh, February um, 2020. And then some, so we obtained um, the survey result about uh, 853 respondent. And then the data processing, uh, like see here, online survey result is collected in 66 data groups. And using our database system by our uh, uh, computer uh, center, the SSDE, and then the result from 60 group um, of data are then processed using Microsoft Excel and uh, into basic information to be used by your game uh, research team. So we did also the data cleaning. This is take a long, um, is a long time. So I mean, um, around how many months? So eight months till one year, right? So eight months, one year. So we make a uh, data cleaning. So, and then the result will be uh, presented today. Uh, the respondent profile of uh, UGM is it here many lecture occupy manager position, which is around 45 percent. And uh, we had also we have also the information from the uh, human resources development in UGM. Uh, around 60 percent of the manager level uh, they have studied abroad. And then 89% uh, respondent working at the UGM. The rest is probably the, 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 uh, the, the work also still in UGM, but probably the, um, like for research center or something like that. And then 69% respondent on had uh, studied abroad, and the population respondent mostly women. It's about six, uh, 62%. And the age of respondent, uh, mostly um, around 60% is around six. 30 to 50 years old, so that's why some countries probably we can also uh, after that. So one of the, our recommendation we go uh, into the detail about the time that the, the our respondent uh, went to study abroad. Uh, for example, in my years uh, around uh, in the late 90 and also probably in the beginning of 2000, this is kind of difference, and this is this is why. Um, some result uh, still uh, anal result analysis is still going on, and uh, when we see here um, the uh, rank of the respondent, I mean the um, the position of the respondent, mostly um, are lecturers and uh, 46 in professor and associate and assistant professor is 32 percent. So. Uh, some that this is uh, out of uh, 883, probably some uh, people, uh, some respondent filled it twice. So whether they are uh, associate professor and also lecturer, so they, they cross in the two um, in two sections. And I came to the result of master program just in start. Yeah, we come to the destination of the. Um, uh, degree of the country of the master program, mostly uh, based on our finding, the Indonesia, Indonesia is the first priority. So they, um, most of our respondents took the uh, master program in Indonesia because it's the fresh graduate as one and then directly, uh, mostly directly to go to the uh, uh, master program. And but some uh, of them, some of them gave went to also the, uh, in the foreign country in uh, Japan is the uh, uh, favorite uh, destination. And the field of the study for the master program, uh, based on our, uh, our finding, uh, there are four favorite fields of study, meaning engineering, agricultural sciences, so I mean agriculture, uh, uh, also animal husbandry, or agrotechnology, and also forestry is becoming agricultural sciences. And then medical sciences and natural sciences. This is its four favorite uh, field of study for the master program. 
Yeah, this is in line, the, stu the studied master country of resident. It is in line of the priority of country destination. First in Indonesia, so by Professor Umimea and Professor Kayasima said this is a study home, right, to the age age. Uh, and then the SI is study abroad. So Indonesia and uh, Japan uh, was the um, uh, favorite of the uh, uh, studied mother, uh, master country of the resident. And just only um, less than 30 percent, they attended collaborative collaboration international uh, master program. So some is probably they have um, um, collaborative uh, or, or success of joint degree or double degree with other um, uh, university uh, abroad. But it's only less than 30 percent uh, they continue, uh, they, they did the uh, uh, master study in the, uh, this collaboration program. And the top um, 12 master university, uh, they were taken for the master. So this is the foreign um, university were chosen as the destination of the gain master degree. The first one is IIT in uh, Thailand, although now it's probably, it's not very uh, familiar uh, or very popular in, the, uh, in, uh, in compared to in the, uh, the, in the late uh, 90s. And then uh, University of Queensland and the uh, and University of Tula, Tula Lanka, University of Thailand. This is the three um, university destination. And it's like Professor Umumia has already mentioned, the main reason to study abroad um, for the master program, it's fun discipline or the field of study, and then the availability of scholarship. And one is the enriched experiences abroad. This is uh, the three uh, reason why they uh, want to uh, do this uh, master program uh, abroad. And then uh, the main reason for choosing countries destination is, is quite the same. Uh, advanced uh, discipline, available of scholarship, and this is quite different, recommendation of supervisor. So uh, some of the supervisor of the, uh, probably uh, the supervisor of the young um, um, lecturer, they gave also recommendation or this through the, um, uh, the connection, private connection or the private connection between um, Indonesian lecture in, for example, Japanese lecture and also uh, uh, in other countries. So they recommend uh, him or her to uh, gain the master program over there. Yeah, the additional uh, educational activity, the first is activities in the field of education are focused on improved learning materials. Mostly, the, they already finished the master program, they um, have uh, um, they have also duty to improve the learning material. And then uh, foreign cooperation in the field of education is one of the second place. This is also uh, how to get the uh, connection to um, uh, foreign university and uh, especially for the, um, to establish a cooperation. And the third level is teaching in foreign uh, university. They, they want to also to teach also um, in the foreign university. And then managerial uh, activity um, are still centered on the internal activities like as, as official in making regulation. And then major activity for overseas cooperation is one and second rank. And the third rank is uh, the two activities above are almost balanced. This is the uh, uh, between uh, in the um, managerial, still in managerial activity, but it's official and also with the offer, overseas cooperation. And for the research activity for the master program um, graduate, uh, publication, presentation, activities both at home and abroad under top 10, the top rank. And then the second was the uh, new research uh, fundraising, seminar, laboratory arrangement, and also research collaboration become the second ranks. And then the third place, collaborative research activities with offices, uh, universities where uh, they, are, uh, they are studying. And the uh, fourth is the um, application of patents. Um, one of the um, um, uh, activity for the conducted research. And then they, they have also the social activities, especially in, in, in Shaska Jamada. We have, the, um, for example, the student, the undergraduate student has a um, mandatory, they have to go to the village for the KKN, the community services, the village, about around uh, two months. 
and also um, the lecturer has uh, the lecturer has to be the supervisor in the field. So this is a social related activity for the respondent, mostly the contribute community development activities, just like I said before, and then contribute to international academic society and also contribute to policy planning, formulation uh, as member of the committee, for, for example, for the uh, government, and also contribute to joint activities in the domestic industrial sector. That is we, we did it like public services, but it's still in uh, the social activities. And then what the uh, impacting uh, work related to activity, mostly for research activity, and then uh, improving teaching learning uh, process, social and community services. This is um, in line with the three Dharma perguruan tinggi, or three pillars of higher education. And the communication after the, the graduate, uh, mostly maintaining communication after the study, um, still with Indonesian friends. So, for example, we have uh, friends and in, in, in study in Japan, for example, in uh, such as uh, Osaka University, and then they have um, uh, such as um, um, uh, association. Yeah, and then this, they're, maintaining, uh, they're maintaining the uh, this, uh, communication after they, um, uh, after they finish the study. And then the uh, other faculty members. So, this time is up for me. Yeah, okay. So this is still in doctor, wait a minute, so just uh, one minute, yeah. Sorry. I will go through the uh, doctor program. Um, yeah, for example, doctor discipline, this is engineering, uh, medical Prof. science. Excuse Pardon? me, Prof. Ayu, we, we have time. So you can continue. So I, I, I saw that the time is up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So, yeah, I, I, I will... Um, to probably two or three minutes to make finish the, uh, the presentation, uh, especially for the doctor um, program. So, for uh, doctor discipline, uh, sorry for doing that. So, engineering, medical science, agriculture science, and natural science, it's still the four uh, favorite um, study program for the doctor uh, discipline. And then, yeah, the fundings is come the uh, foreign country government. So, that at this time, if, um, Foreign country government and now Indonesian government become to uh, like the LPDP uh, offerings also scholarship to um, to the uh, to the people in Indonesia to gain the um, uh, master or doctoral degree uh, in uh, abroad and then multilateral organization and also like World Bank ADP and then privately funding and private uh, foundation in Indonesia. Yeah, um, when we uh, see about the international collaboration, there's only 7% respondent took the international collaborative program. Um, at, um, since I think since five years, um, since five years ago, we we trying to increase the international collaborative program. So like joint degree, uh, joint degree or double degree with uh, um, foreign university. So we we also invite. Uh, we also invite the um, um, for the foreign student come to Indonesia and then especially in Jaskar Jamada and also we send the student um, to um, foreign university and some um, I think some uh, consortium will establish it's already established and then like with Japan so I said uh, to Professor Omuya yes, uh, um, the day uh, before that uh, we have a uh, like program like Suiji. Uh, this is the sixth uh, university initiative between Indonesia and uh, Japan. So three university in, in Japan and three university in Indonesia. We make a uh, uh, student uh, exchange mobility and also some uh, conduct uh, especially in service leader service leader program. So the student um, uh, the student. Uh, stay in the village like uh, Kiki N in, in Saskia Jamada and then uh, we do uh, vice versa and also in, in not only Indonesia but also in Japan. Yeah, this is the most favorite uh, uh, residence that is Japan, Indonesia, Australia, Netherlands and Germany. This is the uh, for the doctorate uh, program. And then the major language is still uh, English, I think it's English, and then come to uh, Bahasa Indonesia and uh, German and French. 
uh, probably in Japan, Japanese is very difficult, right, to write a dissertation. <laughs> Most, yeah. yeah, for the university, um, for studying, then, yeah, uh, you see here, some uh, UGM is not, uh, special for the, um, they took their PhD also in UGM. But um, mostly here, you can see this is the uh, Japanese um, universities that from Kyushu, Kobe, Tokyo uh, Institute of Technology, Ky uh, Kyoto University, till the Ehime University. There are a lot of universities in Japan that um, as uh, the favorite destination of the our our lecture. They gain the uh, they they achieve the uh, uh, doctoral program of that. Yeah, education um, activity for a doctoral uh, program is developing teaching material, adopting the new uh, teaching method, and also the developing courses. This is um, when they came back to Ustaz uh, Gajah Mada, they, uh, they have some experiences in the uh, uh, foreign uh, university where they uh, studied, and then they make uh, such as the how to upgrade or how to update the uh, teaching material and also the method to deliver the, uh, the material. And then uh, when they uh, came to management activity for doctoral, uh, normally they become the university management. So uh, some of us has already knows about that. And then reform university regulation and also joining international network. This is kind of the our uh, strength when uh, you have uh, uh, international collabor uh, international friends, so we can uh, start to have uh, international uh, networking. And this activity for doctoral respondent mostly presented academic conference, uh, published an article, and op uh, obtain the competitive grants. So, so a lot of competitive grants, not only in Indonesia but also in international uh, international level. And then the society activity, I think it's quite the same with the uh, uh, master program. Continue to domestic uh, academic society and then community development and joint activities with industrial sector. And then um, impacting work related to post uh, or doctoral, this is make uh, coursework, research activity and those provision for the uh, uh, undergraduate and, and master program. Yeah. Yeah, uh, some question is responding choice definition. If is there any chance that they can do the uh, they can um, attend the further program? Uh, five countries, uh, the big one. This is Japan, U.S., U.K., Germany, and Australia. Uh, they want to go there to pursue um, the uh, uh, doctor degree. And uh, country choice for the region, uh, you can see here that uh, the first one is the, uh, we can see, um, sorry, this is the, um, wait a minute. Yeah, three um, choice because of the, Yeah, I think this is the um, what you can see here in the screen that they have um, such an advanced technology and something like that that become to uh, country such opportunity. Uh, I come to the closing remark. Sorry. Yeah, um, this is my uh, our closing remarks. Uh, the UGM respondent are very diverse on age, middle position, and also this of the country, mostly women from the classes and technology and also classes social. Uh, Humanity and actually we have also um, not only two, but we have also the agricultural uh, 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 complex agri agricultural uh, sciences and also one is the um, medical science and master program uh, normally to Indonesian University and Japan favorite destination uh, the field of engineering and advanced uh, because of its fun in field of study and scholarship. And for the doctoral program, um, mostly they come to Japan and also one in Indonesia, Australia, and Europe. Um, this is from Germany, Netherlands, UK, and France. 
and the field is still sim uh, engineering and they said that it's fun in field uh, of study and scholarship, the availability of scholarship. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, the further analysis is still going on. So, the result is basic reference for UGM human resources development in academic and administrative aspect in the near future. So, hopefully, uh, this result will be uh, give um, uh, benefit, uh, give benefit to UGM. Thank you very much uh, for your kind attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Prof. Wahyu, for sharing a very rich data on quantitative report on the impact of study abroad for academic professionals at UGM. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will add a more qualitative report on the study abroad experiences, and Prof. Hermin uh, will share about his, her presentation is entitled The Impact of Study Abroad in Strengthening the Three Pillars of Higher Education in Universitas Gajah Mada. And most interestingly, she will also share about the realization and its breakthrough. Uh, Prof. Hermin is uh, the acting director of the um, Center for Southeast Asian Social Studies. She was uh, the, our previous director of the, of the research center, Sex Center of Excellence in uh, Social Science. Um, she is also a senior lecturer at the Communication Science Department at the University of Gajah Mada. Um, she completed both her bachelor and master program uh, at, the, at, at our university in Gajah Mada in Communication Science and Political Science, respectively. She continued uh, her doctoral degree and she got the doctoral degree from Leipzig University uh, in 2006 with summa cum laude. And Prof. Hermin's research interests uh, lies in communication policy, media and communication theory, ecological and environmental uh, communication, and public communication. Uh, she also has a long list of publications, ladies and gentlemen. Prof. Hermin, uh, the time is yours. Thank you very much, uh, moderator, our moderator, Dr. Ita Yulianto, and also good morning everyone, good morning Professor Kayasima and Professor Umemia. Uh, very nice feeling to share our research. Yeah, uh, actually still ongoing process, but I think uh, from three days, uh, very intense discussion, we have so many new insight and we would like to share uh, i just only add some uh, perspective uh, from the point of view of qualitative uh, analysis there are many stories that i i should say that still um, many things that we have to ra digging up and to have the uh, portrait of our research so um as we know that the background and aims of um, okay um, our research is we want to provide a deeper picture of the result of the questionnaire survey and focus on three dharma perguruan tinggi in indonesia namely how the impact of study abroad in education in research and community service for our professional lecturer in Gajah Mada. And the study also aims to report and assess what and how studying abroad impacts the three pillars of higher education, its realization and breakthrough. So the method, as you know, that we use mixed method, namely quantitative and qualitative analysis. As Professor Wahyu say that we have a questionnaire survey for 80, uh, 500, uh, 853 respondents of UGM lectures were collected from 2022 until to 2021 through our semester engine. And then we have qualitative data of 
22 actually selected foreign trained scholars from the four cluster study at UGM were collected through FGD focus group discussion and interview observation as well as compiling re relevant data from our human resources unit so actually the interview questions as uh, Prof Wahyu maybe already highlight we have so um, maybe around seven uh, element that for example what positive or negative effect has your study abroad experience had on your contribution to Tridharma yeah? and then what positive or negative effect has your study experience had on your participation in university management what impact positive or negative do you think study abroad experiences have on internationalization of your faculty and or university the fourth one you open all your arrival to Indonesia have you attempted to implement your study abroad experience and or values five what are the challenges in implementing the value what is your preference in hiring lecturers in your faculty and your department preferable foreign or domestic train and why if you had a chance to pursue your study abroad which country would be your study destination so um we have 22 uh, interviewee yeah our resource person we can say in qualitative perspective so oh i'm sorry yeah i will back so um we have a colleague from engineering five people five lecturers social humanity five agro complex five math and natural sciences a tree and the medicine uh eight of whom were females 14 of whom were males and four of whom were faculties dean and then the academic ranks 12 of whom were professor some of them are former dean and also nine of whom were a phd graduate and one is still pursuing her doctoral degree so the finding uh, if you see here if we're trying to grouping actually um there are two kind of uh, impact there are intangible one and tangible one intangible one related with the competence on international language and then cross-cultural enrichment and cultural democracy that they bring and to implement in ugm and for tangible one namely technical skills critical skills and analytical skills so um we can say that um mostly from a lecturer that uh, study abroad they have um, hold any position so very important position in ugm so around uh, 942 lecturer hold position only 917 do not hold any position but although it's still uh, we can continuing the discussion what kind of uh, position actually because um, we have so many lecturers that very active in many aspects and yeah this is uh, still with the data from the quantitative you have already know that the overseas or graduate serve a structural managerial position so many you can see here from economic and business for example mostly from foreign um, and also in medicine and also in engineering the popular country we have already talking about there are um, japan usa uk australia in germany are still a popular country to continue to study and then this is the discipline of uh, master degree you can see here that um, in our research we can see that engineering lecture engineering colleague very active to fulfill and engage in the uh, in this research and uh, but in social sciences less yeah but i think we have so many uh, data qualitative data from them 
and this is discipline of doctoral program uh, program you can see engineering medical science and health and agriculture still uh, dominant and then uh, we have also here i would like to um come to the uh, general finding yeah so here the positive impact of study abroad is uh, fourfold namely language and cultural competency technical and critical also analytical skills relevant to the performance of academic professional in UGM studying abroad is an imperative powerful mechanism for acquiring important intangible benefit related with the international language and cross-cultural and uh, event as well as cultural democracy I will say that knowledge and competence of international language is a key to open up access to a wide range of the development of scholarly material in the class for both heart and social science and humanity and it also open up access to develop and sustain international networking which at the end of the day will bring benefit for this university and the second as well as tangible benefit um, comprises from technical critical and analytical skills relevant to the performance of academic professional in UGM for the realization of three Dharma uh, perguruan tinggi or higher education uh, tax and we can say that negative impacts is nearly zero yeah. but we can uh, study a uh, letter on impact study or uh, abroad on three Dharma so we can see here uh, education and teaching yeah um, cultivates literary traditions emphasizing more on originally and thinking the unthinkable so we have so many uh, uh, what is that uh, interview and there are many stories that they have like a leapfrog yeah, to see everything thinking the unthinkable because of learning from uh, study abroad conducting more international exposure very sure to both student and also lecturer in research and development for example the impact of study abroad is cultivating more academic research both in individual and collective level in both mono and multidisciplinary on local national or international level encourage productivity in conducting research and publication including policy paper and recommendation and also some colleagues establishing twin center to provide more international atmosphere in Gajah Mada University and developing e-learning platform that we use in UGM now is also the inspiration from outside and the community service uh, our colleague encouraging doing more applied research for problem solving in the society in Indonesia co-developing medical devices for heart, uh, heart attacks someone that we interview yesterday and uh, developing devices from bioceramic bone material for example and in the uh, impact of university of management education uh, there are many stories related the capacity building and social capital so uh, underlying the importance of social capital and adopting long-term thinking from her overseas training this is one of our resource person um, the former dean of faculty of cultural science uh, already host 21 department took major change in policy making of sending lecturer overseas so um but i will uh, go later uh, in the next slide i think i have so many inductive story that maybe can give a more general um, picture of this research so i can say that its science or its faculty could be uh, has a historical historical trajectory of its study destination for example related to the historical context of science for example in UGM we found the data from law faculty cultural faculty that before uh, have a bonding very strong with Netherlands for example but now they adapt and uh, trying over the new perspective and 
Encouragement changes in study orientation for learning occur due to the need for scientific adaptation and academic atmosphere in the study program. Case of UGM, for example, encouraging the younger generation to study abroad driven by desire because UGM is special and we are really aware to maintaining the quality of UGM uh, we have to have the best uh, uh, human resources as the best source of learning that is in our uh, mind as the lecture and also we found uh, one interesting story that the view for the next future from, from our resource person that East Asia is the new magnet for study abroad. One of our resource persons saying that studying East Asia is certainly highly encouraged. Yeah? Uh, for example, Taiwan, South Korea, or further increase the exposure of uh, Taiwan. We all, this is I cited from uh, uh, her, uh, his statement. We also know that Taiwan also has the same exposure. They want to be closer to Indonesia. Taiwan also has a South Point, point policy. Korea has a new South Point policy. And Japan also has an Indo-Pacific outlook. So this is like external factor that attract attention. Our lecture, our student also go to this, uh, our neighbor countries in uh, East Asia. For example, from international perspective, because he, I think he is a lecturer in this international relation. IR has a lot of interest in exploring various regions of the world. Of course, we also want more of them to study in different places, in Europe, in America, in South America, which is a good choice, in the Middle East, in South Africa, if possible, or elsewhere. India, for example, in South Asia, has become a very developed region. So the spirit is looking for a variety of political or cultural structure so that we study the nation or country in the world to find complete humanity. I think that we need to encourage the spirit of diversity, pluralism in methodology or perspective in seeing the world. So uh, this is also a unique story uh, and for me it's very interesting. So I um, put here we have resource person from law faculty, male, former leader, former dean, uh, and returnee scholar from UK. Uh, he says that, of course, there are transformational changes that are affected by our education abroad. The younger generation is more exposed from inside and outside as well as to education abroad. And uh, because uh, the law faculty has also international program established within the faculty, this is also like the push yeah, factor. So the lecturer uh, will go abroad. Law and legal education in Indonesia, they think that will be left behind if we don't make better preparation. One of the best preparation is to prepare a double competitive young generation with the education that we have designed to meet that target. So they also say that a selection mechanism for young, young scholar is also uh, influenced very strong by the perspective to study abroad. He says that law faculty mostly 90% uh, of overseas graduates. So, yeah. um, they say that even if there are domestic graduates, I suggest that the minimum tuval is 500 or more than, or 550, because they think could push them for uh, a doctoral abroad. Why do I emphasize this, he said? Because based on experience and also based on benchmark of friends who have education at several different university, at different institute, they have the opportunity to absorb learning good things in the place where they study so they can contribute when written to our institution so uh, this is the story from law and now we come to the sharing from social and political science source person a young lecturer and returnee from japan he trying to implement all 
interesting value or very important value from Japan in his um, methodology to teaching, to research. For example, he said applying the methodology of teaching Zemi system from Japan. And he said also that, so I think the aspiration to be more adaptive and also efficiency from Japan. Japan is most famous for its efficiency and it's more or less influential. I implemented with it. For example, in university management, when he, he shared yeah, the story, when he asked for transcript or asked for document, they, uh, they are served very well. Of course, there is an underlining culture. In Japan, there is an art to provide maximum service to customer and students are considered as customer, which in Japan is called omotenasi, if I correct to spell it. So in omotenasi, we have to serve with enthusiastic feeling, good expression, speed in service, so all matters related to document in Japan are very fast and net. And also, um, yeah, I think uh, this young lecturer uh, implemented so many value from Japan when uh, what is that? Where he studied abroad, and we come to sharing from cultural faculty uh, from Switzerland. Female lecturer, former leader or former dean, returnee scholar from Switzerland. She say also that there is trajectory in cultural faculty. The first mostly of lecturer come from uh, try, uh, study in Netherlands, but now there is a tendency to other uh, countries in the world, like Switzerland, France, and other country. So she said that I used to criticize why cultural faculty lecturers graduated from only, uh, mostly Netherlands. Are there no other country? I said we want a science that is different from that in the Netherlands, even though we need theoretical thinking. So then, when sparring partner to complement each other, um, she, I think, sending many friends to other country and also planning to go to Japan to make a mixed uh, perspective and rich perspective in uh, her faculty. So uh, she also have an interesting story related with the struggling for scholarship. Uh, she said that there must be a breakthrough because there are many competitors for UGM, especially. Many lecturers out there are registered on LPDP, this is uh, Indonesian funding uh, organization, and they are AD. They later becoming uh, lecturers in other place and spread to big university. The problem is that UGM, for one reason or another, our lecturers somehow cannot study abroad. It's very unfortunate. And then she say that she tried to sending letter to the counselor, to our rector, to give support to a young lecturer to uh, have scholarship uh, for going abroad. And uh, still we have um, a story from philosophy faculty, female lecturer, returnee scholar from France. I think from her story, uh, the idea is to push the young lecturer to study abroad. In Faculty of Philosophy, uh, she said that there is also trajectory from USA, Australia, and now with new destination, France. And, but she said that somehow we think study abroad is sacrifice because um, family time, sacrificing family time, we have to leave anything in Indonesia and so on. That's why she said that uh, some friend would, li would like not to go to abroad. But he, she think that UGM or the faculty should encourage these young people to have outside experience because she think that it is very significant different when this lecturer come from external uh, graduate. Yeah? Uh, so she also sharing very interesting story somehow um, in, when we learn only in Indonesia, there is like no sensitivity to uh, respect to other culture, something like that. Yeah, but uh, maybe we have to take a look the raw data. So we will go to natural science uh, a little bit. 
Um, I have data sharing from agricultural technology, male lecturer, returning scholar from Germany. When I ask which is one uh, is better, study abroad or home study for young generation that you will receive in your faculty. He said that that depends on the chosen study program. In his study program, he said that, okay, foreign graduate may have more experience with laboratory because he or she has the opportunity to use very modern equipment, more sophisticated and computing, etc. But regarding competence, it is very possible that domestic graduates are not inferior. So uh, he said that it will be okay from um, uh, Indonesia. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. And uh, this is sharing from forestry. Um, male lecturer, returnee scholar from Australia and at the same time Germany. It's very interesting. Um, because he has comparative perspective. He said that Australia is so very extraordinary because his experience in master level. He has a lot of work, but very intensive. Academic papers examine in very detail. This then inspire him a work culture that is passed on to younger lecturer. He aware that although the uh, master and doctoral program different, but the uh, it means that a master pattern is very detailed in Australia, but in doctoral in Germany is very independent. But when we ask continuing uh, whether that have a stronger impact, so he said he felt uh, uh, Australia studying in Australia bonding uh, stronger than in Germany. Okay, um, so here, this is also very interesting uh, sharing from agricultural technology, female lecturer, returnee scholar with many background study, master in three university in Europe, maybe because of the possibility of uh, scholarship. So uh, she has master at three European university, at Delft University Technology in Poland, then at the University of Barcelona, and continue at the Scottish uh, University uh, for her research te uh, thesis. And then they continue as a diploma, uh, what is it, doctoral in the um, Scotland. So uh, she also uh, has very unique story uh, because uh, she has a so very well and a good experience. She received many awards from UGM, especially because of many publications that she has. But she said that, yeah, I or you can be productive like that because the credibility in the lab. But that is, that is different from the one here, here in Indonesia. Here for the administration, we have to just sign here, there, a lot of them have done the lab yet. If they're, if they're, as long as the supervisor tell us to do it, we will have asset. Uh, I think the story is about, it is easier to access lab in abroad. But here in Indonesia, we still blocking by many administrative in the home country. So um, I think uh, this one, also two female lecturer from veterinary uh, medicine. Um, yeah, when I ask which young lecturer candidates will be chosen from within or outside the country, she said, I prefer candidates from abroad because its spirit, independence, fighting spirit is more pronounced. At the same time, they are more accustomed to differences during their study so they can empathize with their fellow colleagues. Um, but here in UGM, I think a new lecturer, there is a policy that when he or she accepted there is a letter of agreement has been prepared. Within three years, they must continue his doctoral study abroad. So this is in UGM. Yeah? And um, one of our resource person is also study in IPB, Institute for Agriculture in Bogor. But uh, she has a rich experience because she has international exposure uh, sending to uh, Sweden, Sweden, Bangkok, and uh, she has uh, mentoring from University of Washington. So, 
so many that uh, uh, she uh, also shared with us. So I will say that the challenge in uh, home country is the lack of laboratory equipment uh, on GGM. Yeah. So the limited scheme for funding sources for strategic research. Still, the social challenge in communicating and grounding positive value, experience, or ethic. The difficulty in changing the learning paradigm. The lack of motivation from the research community. I don't know. Maybe we have to ask more. Uh, due to many factors, the unavailability of research mentoring and the overburdening tax for lecturers to manage the obligation of managerial teaching and research. But yeah, we are really aware there are so many uh, problems and uh, issues, but we also aware there are still uh, also breakthrough and strategy. So they say about establishing and develop research lab. Um, they also share developing the supply of tool by disassembling and manufacturing tools from Japan, yeah. establishing a veterinary code of ethic commission yeah, at LPPT, that is one uh, research institution in Gajah Mada, actively participate in developing e-learning platform, this is also achievement with Elisa and Elo, the name of uh, uh, program, yeah. and directing students to create more and sustainable academic project. So uh, finally, uh, this is my uh, last slide. So there is a new uh, changing in Indonesia, changing pattern of study abroad. So I will uh, inform that in the national level now, the organization of the Indonesian Education Fund Management Institution, we call LPDP, started in 2012, has significantly shaped the pattern as well as negotiating power of Indonesia as a developing nation over foreign donor agency on policy formulation for educational funding. In the regional level, UGM also sent lecturer to overseas education, not merely based on the availability of funding as it used to be, but to various nations depending on the need of UGM. By this, political economy and agency is seen as entangled role in the business of higher education. So that is um, my uh, data from qualitative uh, perspective. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Prof. Hermin, for sharing. Uh, what is it? It is not only stories but we treat that as empirical basis uh, for, for this research, this collaborative research. Prof. Ahyu has presented the quantitative picture, the trend of our findings, uh, and that it is more grounded with deeper analysis from these qualitative uh, interviews from our uh, informants. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, now we come to the question and answer sessions. I would like to ask uh, two, uh, uh, two participants to raise his or her hand on site. Okay. Yes, Elo, please. Uh, uh, Elo is uh, he he's uh, in Italian, but studied in Indonesia. Uh, will be interesting. Time is yours. Thank you. Um, as by to say, I'm from Italian, but I'm studying in Indonesia. Uh, my master degree after my in uh, Undif Samara, the focus on political studies, especially in Indonesia politics. And my question is actually for all the speakers. I would say how many people from Indonesia, from Japan, come to Europe, for America, or in the western part of the world, and won't come back in the Indonesia and Japan for work after finish the master degree or, or doctor degree? And if, for example, they come back and work in Japan, and in Japan they prefer to come back in Europe for work, and another uh, question, especially from uh, also for uh, Indonesia and Japan. Excuse me, uh, can you please uh, a bit slower to, oh, yeah. to speak out? I mean, was clear the first question. Okay. The second question is about the mental issue, actually, because I know that uh, in Japan, I mean, we have in Italy a very really strong school for Japan language. I mean, a lot of my friends go to, Jap to Japan 
who study language, uh, Japanese uh, culture, ja uh, Japanese language, and they say that compared to Italy, then, then Japan, Japan is really stressful environment, and sometimes they feel really under pressure compared to Italy. And um, it's true, actually, what is actually the mental problem in uh, mental uh, health mental in, in Japan? In, 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 in Indonesia, is, from my experience, is more or less quite similar to Italy. It's not really competitive. But, I mean, what is your uh, uh, think about that? Thank you. Thank you, Elo. Um, do you get his question? <laughs> the first one is about the mentality. Yeah. Mental. Yeah. Put it very briefly, very short, please. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, you can open your uh, um, mask. Okay. Um, a, lot, a lot of my friends from Italy study in, ja in Japan. Mm -hmm. Language, uh, Japan language, culture language, uh, ja Japanese culture. And they say, for example, that in Japan, the environment university is very uh, pressure. They have a lot of pressure, it's very competitive. And compared to Italy, uh, sometimes they feel like depressing. <laughs> So uh, also know about the news that, for example, the environment in Japan, uh, they have a lot of suicide case in campus. So what is your thing about it, uh, your opinion? The, the first question was uh, about the people that study in Europe from Japan or from in, in, in Indonesia. They won't work in Indonesia and Japan or they won't work in uh, Europe? But, I mean, uh, because, for example, if uh, I take my PhD in Indonesia, Maybe I won't work in Indonesia because I like Indonesia. How many people won't come back in the home country for continue to work? Thank you. Thank you. Please, uh, maybe uh, Prof. Umemia or Prof. Kashima? Thank you very much. The, the mental health of international students is a very important uh, issue for a successful study abroad or successful study abroad experiences for each student. So the, nowadays there are uh, various student support uh, programs or mechanisms which each university provides in Japan. I think it is very uh, similar or same in other uh, destination countries like US or UK. But the, maybe, uh, this is my personal opinion, the difference of the culture itself is the value of the study abroad. Of course, if the international student is too much stressed, and the, the roots, the, the, the mental health uh, in order to pursue their study abroad, it's a problem. But the, if the international student can enjoy or the learn something from that difference of the, 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 the cultural uh, environment, new environment, new cultural environment uh, in foreign countries, it might be one of the, the value of the study abroad and the host university or host, uh, host country or host community have to support international students in order that the, these students will feel it is beneficial to understand, to absorb to some extent or at least to understand the different culture or the value of the host community and also enjoy that difference, it is most important. If it is not enjoyable, it is very difficult to absorb something. So maybe my colleague is coming from Japanese university, so he may say something. 
Thank you. I, I'm also uh, going to try to respond to your second question. I understand that uh, your question is about the Indonesian students after finishing their degrees, how many of them are coming back to Indonesia? Is that right? Um, the, um, in case they are like sent by their universities or by the government, in most cases they will return to their home universities or home country, like government offices, most of them. Um, but uh, of course there are some like individual um, study abroad students, international students, who may stay in Japan after their uh, study. But uh, even in, in that case, uh, it's not always uh, bad about it because uh, um, he, in Japan, um, has a very close relationship with uh, researchers uh, in Indonesia, so he can you know, promote like, international uh, research activities uh, between the two countries, uh, being a sort of bridge uh, between the two countries and sometimes after some years he will go back to uh, his home institution then he will again be a bridge between the two countries so uh, it's not always but about uh, not going back right after their uh, study I believe and I'm not sure but uh, that's my response thank you thank you very much uh, so cultural issue has been uh, uh, what is it has been challenging I think it's not only for for uh, us, but also for everyone who enter a new cultural context. Bu Hermin? Yes. Prof. Hermin will like to respond. Yes, I think um, study abroad is um, enrich your um, experience. That is the most important thing, I think. Uh, we can stay in our country, but if we have possibility to go abroad. You also, I think, learn a lot about Indonesia, yeah? and we are very happy to have you uh, to enrich our discussion. So it's always interesting to have a, uh, a perspective to understand something. And that is maybe for the future uh, education. Yeah? We need uh, we prepare like a global uh, what is that uh, student global people so i think with the facility of uh, uh, scholarship and study abroad will enrich in uh, higher education i think uh, the culture that we learn in regarding the how we have to construct the problem for example it's very uh, rich for example, you say also in Japan like more competitive, uh, in Germany also very disciplined, but in Indonesia we make it uh, also disciplined but a bit slow, I, I, yeah. for example. But that have a strong and weakness in their side. Indonesia also have so many uh, good value, but somehow if we learn from other, look like that uh, stronger. I don't know. In Indonesia, we also have uh, the value of discipline. But if we are live in our country, we are the first citizen. Yeah? But uh, in my experience, for example, uh, I live for five years in Germany. Uh, in Leipzig is a uh, uh, city that uh, very long. Uh, what is that with the communism? And the people uh, very seldom see other uh, foreign. Yeah, and that also uh, bring impact so if you uh, study in this situation you are the become the second citizen yeah so you have to adapt with the university with the education so you will learn not only in university but also from the society that is maybe that uh, i will say and encourage you as new generation to learn a lot from uh, other countries it's very important and for us as lecturer then we will pass this value to our student so we will uh, we yeah for in my uh, perspective also i never uh, say that my perspective is the best i always have a very fresh insight from my student so i will learn because that my professor teach me so this is a kind of uh, what is that experience, evolution, how we evolve. 
as the uh, people and especially for lecturer. And then we hope study abroad can bring positive impact to our student in the university. Maybe that is so. Please learn from many culture. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Prof. Hermin. Do you want to say something, Prof. Ayu? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I just add up from Professor Hermin. Uh, it's quite the same. So when we, uh, when we, learn, uh, we, we study abroad, this is some new experiences will be uh, add up to our um, uh, own experiences. For example, I, yeah, for today we are the same. So Professor Hermin was in Germany and Leipzig, and I was in Stuttgart. It's, it's, just quite, it's quite different. Leipzig is former communism state, and Stuttgart is industrial state. So, um, like what Professor Helmin said, that we we became we became the second the second layer of uh, Zidism. This is not really easy. That we have to adapt by that. And then, um, uh, fortunately, uh, our um, atmosphere in the university support us support us to be the best uh, the best um, student also in the uh, in the university, especially in my laboratory. So that's why I, I had um, um, very good experiences of that because I, can, I, I could show um, my uh, attitude and also my um, uh, achievement that I make like, uh, how to say, the transform the, my laboratory to become internationally. It's not only in national level of German, but we, we went out to go to the international, uh, the international states. This is kind of... Um, achievement that uh, I have uh, reached during my stay in, in, in Stuttgart and we we maintaining we are maintaining the communication until now and then now I have still uh, the communication with my friend who is already he is the uh, uh, director president uh, president director of um, uh, mobile phones in Czechoslovakia and Czech and then also one is the director in the uh, um, one uh, laboratory devices in the uh, south of Germany. This is kind of communication still going on. Although my supervisor is already old and then we, we reduced the communication, but uh, uh, at the last time we met that we, he came to in, uh, Gajamani University at 2018. 2018, he was already, he was 70, 71 or 72 years old and become the invited speaker and then we have, we are as like family. I I hope that you have uh, also some feeling that you are in in, uh, in Indonesia and you have a new family. It's not only Italy that you have also a family in Indonesia. Thank you, Maita. Thank you, Prof. Ayu. Uh, we have one question uh, yeah, from. I, yeah. yeah. So I will I will uh, I will uh, read the question from Professor Yudi. So wait a minute. Yeah, thank you for your duty. So I, I become the uh, co-moderator. <laughs> yeah, this is for Professor, uh, Professor Hermin. You mentioned in the one of your slides that the negative impact of the study abroad is nearly zero. But certainly it is not zero. <laughs> Can you specify the negative impact? Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um in my um, what is that the yeah, focus group discussion that we created so there are so many good stories and but in uh, maybe i don't know in survey you also find nearly zero or not yeah. nearly zero yeah uh, prof uh, yud i think uh, we know that uh, study abroad is uh, not always easy yeah, i think and some uh, of our friend also failed to fulfill the requirement and they could not um, bring the awardee or the title that we have and also somehow uh, it impact yeah, their life but in our uh, FGD so there are so many positive feelings that they have and they uh, thankful that have uh, support so many support to learn other uh, perspective so maybe in this kind of uh, feeling actually we can say that uh, nearly zero because uh, uh, in Sufi maybe uh, our friend from uh, Jaika can 
uh, give additional information but in our research in uh, qualitative yeah uh, the uh, quantitative also that um, they always uh, share the very good impact in our uh, education research and community service for example um, we have also very strong story related with the the impact of education for example and for me also new that the uh, perspective yeah that uh, our friend from uh, UK and uh, he uh, see that um, what we have learned until now maybe we have to trying to what is make it anti-critic so always anti-critic and then he also challenged us in Indonesia like oh uh, you are very uh, uh, what we we, we uh, challenge all professor becoming perfect in three dharma for example good in education good in uh, research and community service and he said that's could not uh, realize I think it's a uh, nonsense uh, there is a lecture like that for example he, he said that in UK uh, we can only like uh, okay education uh, perfect for example you can use uh, the what is that the new approach the new perspective but not in three of all but in Indonesia uh, he said that oh lecturer in Indonesia are very uh, superman <laughs> so we have to do everything with very well achievement in education in uh, maybe in the feeling like that uh, Prof Yudi so maybe I, I, yeah maybe uh, from the quantitative you have story why we have uh, come to the uh, conclusion nearly zero yeah thank you prof Ermin. just add up a uh, little bit pa, uh, prof yudi so by the quantitative one so actually we 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 don't have we don't have uh, the negative impact but some uh, is probably they have uh, a difficulty they have the difficulty to uh, to adapt during when, when they return to the uh, ugm for example and then they need one or two years, one or two years to, uh, yeah, for example, like Professor Kermin said, the three Dharma. So we have, we have to be the best in, in teaching, the best in the research, the best on the community services. And this is not easy when, when we when we uh, more than three or five years in, in Japan and in Europe, stay over there. And then, uh, yeah, the, the adaptation, uh, we, we need a little bit of time. And also uh, some, uh, how to say that, social activities. It's not social activities uh, due to the our uh, uh, normally uh, normal academic um, um, activities, but also when we live in when we live in in the uh, uh, in the village or uh, yeah they, we have a certain we have certain position. So yeah, you are you came from from uh, foreign uh, a foreign university. You have uh, for example you have PhD, from, but you have the certain level, and this, this certain level is sometimes is make. A little bit difficult, so I think uh, Prof. Yudi already uh, know about that. So uh, the, the 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 society, um, how to say that? The society want that we can do more in uh, every sectors. So that's my idea. Thank you, uh, Prof. Yudi. Thank you, Prof. You, Prof. Hermin. Uh, we have one more question. I I I I am asking sorry. you. We have to. Um, this is uh, uh, Imron and also Prof. Deng. Once oh, again, okay. okay. So I read it too because all of right. the time. Please read that for me. Can that? Oh, Mas Imron, uh, are you available right now? The scene, the scene is yours. Yes. Please. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. I think uh, the seminar is very interesting and give us uh, our opening our perspective on how actually the support after study. I think that's the the, the important point that I would like to raise uh, in this time because uh, if we just continue about the, how we finish study uh, abroad we also need to think about how we can support the post-study uh, from abroad but was my example that uh, after I went back from Germany I got support for almost two years and that's not only Supporting uh, uh, for exchange skin, but also even a top-up uh, salary. I think that's a very important uh, point 
uh, how we can proceed uh, about the benefit of uh, uh, study abroad. Then I just wonder whether in your survey, uh, Prof. Hermin and also Prof. Wang, you, you, you have any chance to explore uh, post-study support uh, for uh, our participants or do you think it is important for uh, us who study abroad to facilitate or maybe from TIP can provide facilitation for this kind of support? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mas Imran. Uh, Mas Imran is a lecturer from the uh, Faculty of Forestry in UGM. Um, Mas Imran, yes. Please, uh, would like to respond, Bu Hermin? Okay. Mas Imran, hello. Uh, yeah, um, it's really interesting because we are from uh, DAAD, I think Germany. So we have uh, uh, an experience. And I also share with our colleague from Japan that uh, German uh, scholarship uh, system is really developed um, and they think after we leave Germany. So I myself um, have uh, supported for a uh, book in, Eng in, in Germany uh, language and I think the, uh, the idea behind is that we, uh, we have to use always uh, uh, Germany uh, to support our teaching material and that is very uh, important uh, they give me one, for one year around yeah 100 euro to always uh, sending the book from them and but I think uh, this experience is not all yeah I, I also uh, have some friend that after uh, their graduation never what's that no support at all for me myself also they give me like a safety belt yeah when I back to Indonesia and they give uh, like a very early uh, uh, step up money yeah? <laughs> like uh, uh, buying computer buying uh, everything that we want yeah so maybe it's like a reputation of a country so I'm very lucky have a kind of facility but um, uh, there are many hopes that uh, after graduation there is still connection so like uh, from USA uh, Australia maybe I don't know whether they already develop it or not so uh, the contract finished after we final uh, our study yeah? uh, we finalize our study so I think um, it should be developed like that so there are many level that we can create the the building uh, collaboration so i mean when we are now in the professor level i think we are also still need support actually for our research yeah but but somehow it's uh, very seldom to have but thank you for um, uh, your uh, insight thank you prof hermin for the response um, can i have one more question Somebody from Taiwan is raising his hand. <laughs> Prof. Chen Bangdeng, uh, uh, time is yours. Please, please put your question briefly. Yes, yes. Um, I'm very uh, thanks for for both uh, uh, Parato and who have his presentation. Uh, both are very inspirations uh, um, for. Uh, topic about the uh, study abroad. Um, just very uh, it's not uh, about uh, the question. It's uh, sharing the experiences. Uh, my experiences study uh, abroad in Germany and uh, similar to by uh, and for many in Germany. I just uh, a very uh, short response to uh, you this uh, question about the negative. Uh, probably I can ask that it's a negative, but uh, I think everyone who study abroad, you have to adapt yourself very strongly uh, in the host country. And you, you might be secured by a lot. And when you didn't get a scholarship, and then you have to uh, spend a lot of money there. And sometimes uh, you probably also face the discrimination. It happens sometimes, really. So uh, it's just, uh, if you want to say this is uh, negative and later is. But I also want to say, uh, by this finding, is uh, 
fact that the negative point is close to visual is uh, very important right now, uh, especially if we talk about this as a time of globalization, then uh, the founding is very part of, uh, that about the young generation is uh, more willing to study abroad. And this is very part of, especially when we uh, cultivate our young generation as a global citizen. So uh, it's a uh, full mean can provide us a framework about the tangible and intangible uh, framework. So the intangible framework is to provide the student when they study abroad, they get a, a deep, a different language, and then learn about a different culture. And that is a very important at the time of generation. We push our generation, generation, younger generation, they can learn more about the different culture. And this is uh, my sharing with my experiences. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Deng, uh, for sharing your experience as well. I think it was not a question. Uh, for the sake of time, for the, yes, for the sake of time, um, we are approaching 12:30 right now. Maybe we can, we can, may, we may come to the recommendations from Prof. Kayashima and Prof. Umemiya. Uh, please, the time is yours. Maybe if you want, uh, you can also uh, comment on the post-study uh, scheme from Japan, probably. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, the, there are various uh, scholarship programs provided by different organizations, and each uh, different programs have different uh, 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 follow-up programs or modality uh, after, return, after the return of the, the student. So I cannot generalize everything, but maybe one thing I can say that from the, the data or from the, the information which we gathered or the UGM colleagues gave me, uh, the uh, faculty members uh, who are keeping a good relationship with the supervisor of the host university, they are often uh, getting some, for example, support in terms of the, the, the budget or in terms of the equipment, but not only the physical, such, these kind of the support, but the more intellectual, uh, uh, the, 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 the relationship or programs or projects, or chances to go to Japan or to the Western countries, etc., etc. So, the if you have chance to, if you have chance to study abroad, and if you can keep the relationship of the supervisors or the friends uh, of the students within the same laboratory, etc., maybe that may enlarge. That your possibility of continuing study or the conduct the research, even in uh, less developed countries, I suppose. The world is globalized more and more. There are difference of the places, the, the level of development, but if you are connected to the different parts of the world, maybe we, you will have more chance to get something. That, that is my comment. Thank you very much. Excuse me, now then you may come to the recommendations. Please, the time is yours. Yes, yes, final recommendations. Thank you very much. Uh, we uh, started this research project in 2019, and after the very difficult time of the COVID-19, uh, the, the, my colleagues, my friends in UGM and ITV worked very hard to gather the information and finally today, uh, the, this week, I and Naoki uh, came to, to, to the site, to your university. And again here, uh, from the beginning of this week, we are gathering so much valuable uh, information and the experience shared to us. And the, based on this uh, uh, information, valuable information or experiences, 
shared with us, I'd like to mention uh, four things uh, briefly. The first three, the study abroad experiences provided uh, various impacts to the universe, to the individuals, but as well as to the university development itself. We are sure that it is very sure, but it doesn't say that the study abroad experiences is uh, are the better than the study home experiences. Maybe study home experiences also provide a different impacts and the, also uh, the advantages. And secondly, uh, I was very happy to hear that diversity of the destination country is very, very important for the development of the, the various programs. Diversity makes the more benefits uh, to uh, rather than sending all the lecturers or students to one country. So sending or the, the, receiving the returnee from the various countries, you can mix the best aspects of the each experiences to make the, the, the more, uh, the, the better program in UGM. So uh, the purpose of our, our study is not making the ranking of the destination country, but we would like to understand what are the differences or what are the characteristics of the different study uh, uh, destination country or what are the differences or the characteristics of the, uh, the experiences of the different, in different destinations. And the, uh, the mixing or merging the various experiences of the various countries, maybe that will make the better educational and research program than these destination countries. This is my second comment. And third comment is that the, the study a, a home, study at home, study in Indonesia is also very important especially in emerging countries. Uh, we are conducting this research in other countries such as Malaysia, Vietnam, and Cambodia, especially in, in Malaysia and in Indonesia. We had, that the, uh, we had the opinion that the studying in home country is very important because you need to develop the postgraduate programs in order uh, uh, in order to have the, the good sound development of higher education, in order to have a very developed uh, 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 the higher education university programs, you have to have the postgraduate programs. Doctor program is very important. It is very directly linked to the productivity of the research programs. So if you send the all of the best students outside of the country, it's very difficult to develop the post-graduate uh, program, especially doctoral level. So the, uh, some of the, uh, uh, the, the researchers of higher education in Malaysia or Indonesia are saying very strongly that the, we have to be very careful to send out all the best students outside of the country uh, to, for the development of the doctoral program inside in country. I think it's, that is very true. And that, that my fourth comment is that, but at the same time, higher education internationalization is imperative nowadays everywhere, not only in developed countries, in, even in the developing countries, higher education, university education, university research programs have to be internationalized. Academic world has nowadays no borders. So the older programs uh, need to be internationalized. And the one of the best uh, uh, tool or the best way is the study abroad, abroad experiences uh, of the faculty members. So it is very contradictory, uh, contradictory needs uh, between the, the development postgraduate programs inside of the country and the internationaliz internationalization of the university. 
At the same time, you have the needs of the international experience of the faculty members, but at the same time, you have to keep the best student for the, for the, the doctoral program uh, in Indonesia. But the, the both are the very imperative needs for your country and also for Japan too. So uh, the, we have not yet reached the final uh, 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 conclusion of our research, but the, but, uh, but I can say now is that you have to mix all these as aspects uh, when you formulate your own uh, human resource development strategy or faculty development strategies. How to uh, promote? How to uh, uh, create the best? doctoral programs, how to internationalize, how to promote international uh, experiences of the faculties, how to combine the different experiences of the faculty members uh, from the different uh, destination countries, etc. So the combining these different factors, maybe uh, you have to create the human resource development strategies. Uh, from our side, we will continue this research. As I mentioned, this is not the ranking making research. We are not very interested in the ranking. But we want to know what kind of, what kind of study abroad experiences produced, what kind of impacts. And the, we, don't want, we want to uh, compare the destination countries, but we want to compare the different uh, uh, the sending countries, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, uh, Cambodia, and also we want to understand the changes of the, the, the environment in Indonesia or in Japan or in the world. In that way, we can understand better the meaning of the study abroad and impacts of study abroad, which may provide the good implication for the formulation of the policies of the government and policies of the each universities in the future. Thank you very much. I think everything was said by Dr. Kayashima. <laughs> <laughs> but just, just trying to add a, a point about, uh, about the last point uh, Dr. Kayashima mentioned, uh, which was about the um, um, international relations uh, between the two countries or uh, um, the, um, the value of studying abroad. Um, I also believe that um, the academic staff who have the experience of studying abroad is going to be a very important asset for um, UGM in this case here. And um, at the same time, um, the, they are going to be very important assets for the destination country side as well. Um, uh, because they also would like to promote uh, internationalization of their uh, universities. Uh, they would like to promote uh, international uh, collaboration. Um, so I was very happy to hear from the director of research at the Ministry of Education saying that uh, the government of Indonesia is also um, trying to support those uh, who came back from uh, abroad um, to further collaborate uh, with international uh, partners, particularly in their destination uh, countries. And uh, the Japanese government is also uh, trying to support those uh, initiatives um, of our uh, partners in our partner countries uh, for further uh, international collaboration. And uh, uh, like joint degree type of programs in education and also joint uh, research programs internationally, um, um, we, can, we can do something which only one institution in one country cannot provide. So there would be a lot of uh, value added um, in terms of education for students, in terms of uh, research uh, for like um, good publication that would provide a lot of insights for the society. So um, yeah, I think the um, value of uh, those who studied abroad is going to be more and more uh, important in the coming years. So that's my comment.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Kayashima and Prof. Umemia. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we are uh, approaching the time. So um, I would like to thank the honorable speakers and also honorable participants for our panel today. I would like to return the floor to, the, to Mr. Moderator. Mas Adit, please. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rita, for sharing this panel discussion. Give applause for all participants and also for the experts. Thank you very much. And also thank you very much for all of the experts, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and we have come to the end of the International of International Webinar with JICA. And next, we would like to invite the Secretary of Directorate of Research, Universitas Kejamada, to deliver a closing remarks. Dr. Mirwan Husada, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, selamat siang, konnichiwa. Dear our expected guests, uh, Dr. Nobuko Kayasima, Dr. Naoki Umemia, Dr. Yudi Soharyadi, uh, Bapak Wakil Rektor Bidang Pendidikan dan Pengajaran dan Kemahasiswaan, Bapak PLT Direktur Riset Teknologi dan Pengabdian kepada Masyarakat, Bapak Ibu Dekan, kemudian tim peneliti, Dr. Wahyu Supartono, Prof. Hermin, Dr. Joko Loknanto, Dr. Ita Yulianto, our respected guests in Balai Senat, and also the online uh, media Zoom. First of all, on behalf of Directorate of Research, we would like to express uh, our sincere thanks for your attendance in the international webinar collaboration between JICA Ogata Research Institute, uh, UGM, and ITB. Hopefully, uh, this will be kind of best practice. We use the scientific approach, research approach, to uh, assess the impact of study abroad. The expected outcome is not only the internationalization, as your fourth recommendations, but also how to support the human resource management. As we know, the business core of the university is higher education, and the academic staff is one of the important backbone. Yesterday, uh, we have uh, discussed about the impact in UGM, and today we compare it with the ITB. There are uh, two treatment of study abroad and study at home and many parameters using the different approach from quantitative, also the qualitative. From the reasoning why to what the next. And related to the four recommendations, I noted in the one word, what we call optimization. Why? Because first, if the study abroad can provide the various impact, then it will enrich him or her as academic staff how to deliver the knowledge to their students. Once again, we refer that the background of university is higher education. And second, destination of country. There's a various. So it means that it teaches the academic staff to create the global optima, as I refer from the artificial intelligence approach, means the global optima that the academic staff knows everything that he learned from the various type of education, even talk that it's study abroad or study at home. And the last, related to uh, the principle of education as lifelong learning, means that by using the four recommendations, we know that when we receive the knowledge, we blended the knowledge, and we generate a new knowledge. That is the purpose of internationalization. And since it is a preliminary result, and start from 2019 and still continue to 2024, we are looking forward for the fruitful international collaborations and 
maybe the next year disseminations. Mata yorosiku onengai tasimas. Thank you very much for your attendance. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Secretary of Directorate of Research Universitas Kejamada, Dr. Mirwanusada, for the closing remarks. Thank you very much for attention. We'd like to extend our gratitude to all of the experts. Thank you very much. Thank you also for the moderator, Dr. Rita, and also to all participants for attending this program. Thank you very much, everyone, and see you on the next agenda. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you. Dan mungkin untuk menutup agenda pada siang hari ini, kami mengundang Bapak Ibu semua untuk berfoto bersama di depan, sehingga teman-teman mungkin dari Direktorat Penelitian dan juga segenap peserta, expert dan juga moderator, kami undang ke depan untuk melakukan sesi foto bersama. Silakan Bapak Ibu segenap peserta untuk bisa maju ke depan untuk melakukan sesi foto bersama juga teman-teman rekan-rekan dari Direktorat Penelitian barangkali yang hadir pada kesempatan siang hari ini bisa maju ke depan untuk melakukan sesi foto bersama. Silakan teman-teman peserta monggo. Dan setelah melakukan sesi foto bersama, sebelum Anda kembali ke rumah masing-masing atau mungkin ke unit kerja masing-masing, kami menyiapkan Bekal makan siang untuk Bapak Ibu semua, silakan untuk bisa diambil di meja.